All right, here we go. The mighty TK Kirkland back on Vlad TV one more time this year before we're done with 2022. The great Vlad. How you doing, sir? I am doing great. That's I am it. healthy. That's right. You know, I went to go see my cardiologist today. My heart is in good shape. Right. I'm going to be around for many more years. Yes, that's what you know, I'm trying like to trying to get to your age and yes. further. Well, I found out I got a little high blood pressure. Okay. But I think it was something that I ate. But um, when I go back, but what I've learned as I've gotten older, um, we talk about going to get go to the doctor once a year, twice a year. I go every three months. Mm. Because let me tell you why. We pay our medical insurance every month. Yeah. So why the fuck go once a year? Well, you can go every day. Yeah. So I, I go <laughs> Still every, paying the same price. And it yeah. keeps me disciplined. Yep. See, I go every three months. So when I, I know that next date, I know exactly what my doctor's telling me. Yep. I want to do everything right. Because like me and you understand, I love life. Oh, I, I love life. And, and I always say, like, I remember when I was running Vlad stocks and talking about investing and so forth, and I was making videos about how to invest. The first video was, before you think of investing, get health insurance. Yes. That's the first thing you should start spending yes. money on. Yep. Fuck all that stocks, bonds, yes. crypto, mm -hmm. all that shit don't mean nothing. If you're in a, in a casket. It's so true. You know no, what I'm It don't matter. You have all the money yeah. in the world and be yeah. done. But just to sit and see you pulling up in nice cars. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For you to see me in something right. beautiful. We riding good. Riding right? good. We, we, we looking good. Yeah. We dress good. So that's, was, that's so yep. important. And, Absolutely. Um, I hope, I think this gets to the, the kids and young men around the world because they really, I told you, they really walk up to me and they want to get their lives together. They want to eat good. And that's key. So we're we have our our lane yep. on this show. We have our lane. Well, right now it's December twenty third, two thousand and twenty two. Yes. And as we were pulling up to the studio, I broke the news to you that Tory Lanes has been convicted in a jury trial on all three felony charges. Yeah. In regards to shooting Megan the Stallion, assault with a semi-automatic handgun having a loaded unregistered firearm in a vehicle and gross negligence in discharging his firearm. Yeah, that kind of hurt, but. You were shocked. Them, you were shocked. When I, I was shocked. Yeah. I, I really wanted Tori to be this case. And let me tell the fans why I really thought Megan was um, lying about something because the information that they was leaking out was pointing to her as being a liar. Mm -hmm. I hate at the same time that her sexual life got pulled out into the world. Cause that, for some reason, I don't think that was necessary to talk about who she slept with and et cetera. Now, what do you think? It was, it was part of the whole story, right? Cause that's what triggered the fight in the car. Cause the whole thing of it was, was that her friend Kelsey was sleeping with Tori, but I guess Kelsey got COVID and while she got sick, she started sleeping with Tori behind her back. Wait, 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 yeah, wait. That's wait, what happened. Wait, yes. what happened? So basically her friend was sleeping with Tori. Yes. Not knowing that Megan was sleeping with Tori behind, you know, her back. Is that the young lady who was supposed to be uh, Megan's friend? Exactly. That was like her best friend, her assistant, whatever. And then, you know, this sort of culminates because they're at, the, at Kylie Jenner's party. And while Tori is sleeping with both these girls, he's in the pool with um uh Kyrie Jenner Kyrie, yeah Kylie Jenner Kylie. trying to trying to get with her right K Kylie, so he Kylie got these, yeah. he has these emotions going on right so so oh, Megan is watching player. this dude who she fucking with behind her friend's back trying to get with this other girl who's kind of like richer and more famous right, than, than right. everyone else and you know she gets mad she's drunk i mean this whole thing was a drunken mess Everyone's drunk. I don't know if there's pills involved or now what other drugs. it all makes sense. I didn't know this. Yeah, yeah. A fight, an argument breaks out in the car. They're talking shit to each other. Uh, Megan's talking shit about Tori's career. You know, she's a bigger artist than right. Tori. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then, and then he gets mad. They stop the car. Apparently, Megan starts to fist fight with Kelsey and Tori and his, and his driver get involved. And then... Shots break out and Megan gets shot in the foot. Well, fragments, you know, I, I don't think that anyone was meaning to shoot her, but once you put a gun in a situation- and it, went, and it goes the wrong way. 
And somebody used, could have been dead. Someone could have been dead. Yep. Someone could have been but dead. But that's a soap opera. And we don't really know what happened because everyone's story is different. Right. Kelsey had a whole story when, when you know, when everyone was, you know, arrested and, you know, whatever, detained. She did a whole story saying how Tori shot Megan. But then when she got on the stand, she changed her whole story. Okay. So I saw that. Yeah. I saw so that. the judge allowed her original testimony to be played to the jury. Man. There's text messages where Kelsey said, you know, she hit like Tori's, uh, I mean, sorry, Megan's security and said that Tori just shot Megan. You know, there's, and, and that's the problem with these courts of public opinion. Everyone, I had a poll after poll after poll and every poll, Tori not guilty. Uh, Kelsey shot her, uh, Megan shot herself. You know what I'm saying? Right. Every poll I did was saying, that Tory's gonna walk away. And I felt the same way. And, and, and let me tell the fans why again. One, he was a black man, I felt sorry for him. But when you break it down the way, the facts, it's always about the facts. Mm -hmm. When you do it that way, it goes back to young men and women. One, to be a player, you gotta be intelligent. That's one. You know, some people marry, some people think they're players. But when you're young, because uh, to me, those, they are kids. Tori's not smooth enough to handle two women like that. He just happened to be him. He got lucked up, was fucking Megan, fucking Kelly. He thought he was on some player shit. Then you go to another event and mess with somebody else. All those rules are bad. Yeah, he's five foot two. Five foot two, all those rules are bad. One, you don't bring two women that you're fucking in the same room together unless there's an understanding right. that both of y'all fucking. So if you're right. sneaking around fucking and one gets drunk, the other one gets drunk, you've messed with some other girl, everybody else getting him up, and it's Kylie, right? So that's gonna get you upset. Right. Uh, Tori, I just wish you the best to all the fans and Megan Stallion fans. Um, I know y'all wish your girl. At the same time, I hated that um, I never listened to Tory's music until he first got arrested. And I actually downloaded his song, a couple, maybe it's, I think it's an album, and I liked him. I had never really, I heard about him, but I didn't know his music. And when I heard his music, I said, whoa, this brother's really talented. And to throw it away over some bullshit. Yeah, I mean, before the trial started, Tory Lanez had this last tweet. He said, I'm gonna leave this here. One more time and watch how it goes. No weapon formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that rises against me in judgment shall be condemned. You sit and watch now and don't ever question the God I serve again. This is my last tweet. This was sent on December 7th, 2022. And look what happened. He is facing potentially 23 years. Now, here's the thing. I know they offered him a deal. I think the deal they offered was a bunch of years in prison. Okay. And... And this is what I tell people, because, because you know, I've been through trials myself yeah. and so forth. I've had lawyers, you know, tell me things that I didn't listen to and mm -hmm. so forth. If you have an upcoming legal trial, shut the fuck up. Absolutely. The only person you should be talking to is your lawyer. That's right. Because whatever you say to your lawyer is protected. Yeah, exactly. They can't go and get those text messages or tap your phone or whatever else. Whatever you say to your lawyer is privileged yes. and totally secretive. Yes. But Tory's out there on social media making songs about the situation, talking about how he's fucking two friends. You know, I mean, he put some of the information out there himself. Okay. Talking shit, arguing with people, getting into fights with August Alsina. Okay. You know, which right. which tells more of the story. Right. You know, I mean, they wanted to put, you know, he potentially was going to take the stand. And if he was going to take the stand, they were going to look at his his song lyrics. He's got gun tattoos on his body. That was going to get brought up. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Both of them were running their mouth. Megan was running her mouth. You know, she did an interview with Gail King saying she wasn't sleeping with Tori. Yep. It's so true. Which makes her a liar in the court of public opinion. Right. And makes her somewhat of a liar to the actual jury. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Nobody who does an interview wins. From R. Kelly mm -hmm. to the young man who just got arrested for the crypto. Yep. Once you go on the news to defend yourself, you're that, done. Yeah. I mean, listen, I remember during the closing arguments, Tory Lane's lawyer said, 
Megan Pete is a liar. She has lied about everything in this case. She told you black women don't talk to the police. And yet, four days later, she's talking to the police. So, you know, both sides, it's a ruthless case. Both yeah. sides are trying to tear each other down right. and everything. And look, at the end of the day, all this public opinion shit don't matter. That jury was there, probably middle-aged people. There was women on that jury, men on that jury. Black well, the people, facts are the people. facts. The facts are the facts. See, they can, they can, you can do stuff based on opinion, but what I'm hearing from what you told me, it was a smart jury. They didn't get misled yeah. over no BS. They stuck to the facts. But now, but here's a question, though, because I did read something. They said his hand wasn't on the gun. Well, the DNA on the gun was inconclusive. Okay. Which doesn't mean, but he had gun residue on him. Oh, he did? Yes. Okay. Well, and the girl did as well. Kelsey had gun residue on her as well. I'm confused. And, and, and there is a bit of confusion here. You know, who exactly shot, but it seemed like he did some of the shooting. Okay, but how did the other person get the gun? Would they pass well, the gun? you could you could get gun residue on you if you're in a close vicinity of somebody, or if you're holding the, or if you're yeah, you both both you're of you both got your hand. It. Listen, I don't think anyone really is going to know what happened except those three. Well, even those three, they're all drunk. You see what I'm saying? Everyone's intoxicated, so you know. Think about all your drunk nights. Do you really remember what happened? Do they? Did they ever find the um, the bodyguard? Because I know well, he was the missing. bodyguard showed up today. After the trial was over, essentially, the jury was deliberating. But yeah. that was Megan's guy. Megan's guy, yeah. I mean, the driver, who was Tory Lane's bodyguard, who I, I heard was his cousin, I'm okay. not quite sure, he was never brought to the stand. Okay, that means something. Not sure why. Yeah, come on. Not sure why. Yeah, he wasn't because a good witness. Well, if they don't bring you to the stand, he was there. I'm, yeah, that's my point. Know. If you was there and they don't bring you, you're not a good witness. Like you, you can't lie well, or you're gonna get everybody locked the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom line, you're gonna say some stupid shit, and everybody getting locked the fuck up. But both of them, God bless them all, Vlad. Um, I just hate that that boy about to do 23 years. Well, we don't know how many years he's well, going to do. He was facing up to 23 years. The sentencing has not happened. That's going to happen later on. Now, obviously, he's going to appeal, but appeals are hard to come by. What, 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 for those that don't know, oh, he will just appeal. When you appeal, three judges who are higher up than the judge in your trial have to unanimously decide that something in that courtroom was wrong. Okay. This is how Bill Cosby got off. Mm-hmm. The, the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania looked at the case and said, okay, Cosby should not have gone to court. He had a, he had a deal had a with deal. a former DA. You know, they should not have gone to court and we're throwing this case out. But it's not cut and dry like this in the Tory Lanez mm -hmm. case. So sure, they could appeal and they could fight it and they could push things back and, you know, maybe he'll get bond. We, we don't know. Right. I'm not sure if he's you know, if he's put in prison at this point. Right. Obviously, he has a lot of money, so he could post a bond right. if need be. But an appeal is hard to come by. And he's going to be in the state, which is worse than the feds. Absolutely. When you told me, I thought he was in New York. You said, no, nah, is he in Cali? Yeah. I said, man, he going to Wayside. Yeah. You know, that's what they still send him up there. He going to, uh, wish him well. Right. And, uh, you know, he is a Canadian citizen, so when his uh, prison time is done, he'll get deported back to Canada, and he'll probably not be allowed to enter the U.S. Absolutely. again. And I say that because that's what happened to Shine. Yes. Remember the, the shooting mm -hmm. incident? Right. Someone got hit. Shine has not been back in the U.S. since. You're right. No, he's been... Was Wait, he, but yeah, did he come back? back? Okay, he came he, back I, as a, um, a dictator or something. Not a dictator. Whatever I mean, the hell he is. He's a, he's a politician. Politician, in, uh, yeah. He's a politician. Yeah, not a dictator. That's hilarious, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's a politician, believe. So maybe he got back on, on those on those. Right, regards. right. Uh, but yeah, man, it's... Um, and you know, I predicted this a while back. Based on the information that I learned and how I studied this case and right. so forth, I'm like... He shot her. He's going to go to prison. And I remember he sent me a bunch of angry DMs. He was calling right. me the police. He was trying to figure out what I knew and mm -hmm. so forth. And I'm like. Just the facts. I, I know what I know. Right. Oh, you, you the feds. Fuck you. I'm like, all right. You're right. You got the facts, man. Okay. Because I'm sitting here listening to you. And before you told me that, I think I was just going off of um, 
being a man's man. Want the brother to get off, you know? Want the brother to get off. But yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, D.L. Hughley was here the other day. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, he said that, look, even if Tory is found guilty, most people will still think he's innocent. Absolutely. And most people thought that Megan was lying from the, from even when we didn't know what the facts were in the right. beginning. So, you know, I think that she's going to have a hard time in the industry. Oh, you know, yeah. This is going to affect her career as well. Yes, it is. But not as much as his career because he's right. going to be. He's going a, away. He's going away. 23 years, man. We don't know that. Like I said, yeah. we don't know. But it could, it could, could end up being five years. Yeah, it could but be. But it's three real felonies. Right. Three. Too bad Trump ain't in office. <laughs> you would pardon him? <laughs> hey, wow. uh -huh. Here you go. That's when you need Trump, boy. Yep. Well, uh, what else is happening is the YSL case is still ongoing. Mm, yes. Uh, Gunna was the first person to get out. Yes. He Slow took down. a plea deal. I think it was like five years probation. Mm hmm and uh, he had to plead guilty to a RICO charge. Right. He also had to get on the stand and say that YSL is a gang, mm -hmm. a criminal organization. I have seen uh, crimes committed by the members in furtherance of the gang. Right. And he was able to walk away. Mm -hmm. A bunch of other people have taken similar plea deals. They all accepted that they're in a RICO, you know, uh, one guy got like 15 years probation, which I've never heard of. I saw that. And I remember I had put up some some tweets about it. I said, look, you know, with Gunna taking this plea deal, now they've established, you know, one of the main guys has now established a RICO. And, you know, that's going to ultimately reflect on Young Thug's case, which is who they really want. Right. And, um, you know, there was other stuff in there. His lawyer actually called me. Yeah, so I think I, I think I read that yeah. somewhere. Yeah, his lawyer called me. We had a conversation about it. He goes, look, you know, the way I set this up is that whatever he says can't be used against other people. And um, basically, he's not hurting anybody and so forth. But, you know, and he said he could be called to the stand, but he could plead the fifth. And that's where it gets a little fuzzy because some people are saying, well, he could plead the fifth about things that would um, implicate himself. But if it does implicate himself, he'll have to actually speak truth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and people are like, these DAs aren't giving these plea deals for nothing. Absolutely. They, they have something, there's a bigger picture here. There's a bigger picture. Yeah. And you can't trust them because they always say they're gonna do one thing and do another. But yeah. it goes to show you what the DA is doing to in Atlanta. See, when you got a RICO, everybody goes down, mm. all right? Everybody. For them to let them gentlemen leave, they're just after a celebrity. They're after Young Thug. That's all they want because yeah. if I'm not mistaken, Young Thug is the only guy telling people what to do and they'll go do it. Well, he's the leader. He's the boss. So he never actually did himself. So the people who are really dangerous are the people that you really let go because they was following the orders of a boss. Right, and that's the whole thing about a RICO is that other people, like multiple people can get charged off of a crime that they may not necessarily have done themselves. Right. If someone in that in that uh, corrupt organization, you know, has doing th things for the gang, then everyone gets charged for the same right. I really feel everybody should have went away. And if I could see one person getting off for Rika because he snitched on everybody, but not that many people. But I had read months ago, they said they had 33 witnesses lined up to testify well, against I heard it was more, I was heard it was more than Probably that. more. Hold, hold on. Like think 300 now and something. Uh, yeah, like half of Atlanta is going to be witnessing <laughs> witnesses <laughs> on this trial. No, I heard it was like over 100 people. Wow. Yeah. So they have going after celebrity. But here's the thing about life, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you young kids think backwards. The goal in life is to get the money and act like a celebrity, not get the money and stay in the streets. Yeah. That's ass backwards. It's I don't understand it. You, 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 you I want to show your money on Instagram, whether it's fake money or real money. I saw a thing, a guy had fake money 
pants half on as just to prove that he was doing something. I just want the kids to understand. I mean, we talked about this before. I said, the man to follow and rap is Drake. Yeah. Drake has to be your blueprint to success. Yeah. Stay in the studio. Stay in the studio. Family. Have a good time with your friends. And take your ass home. Yeah. Play with your son. Play with your son. All that gambling. Drinking. Because when you're drinking, what they're not thinking about 10, 15 years from now, your life is ruined. See, a, a Chinese um, woman told me, she said, TK, you're, the way you look, it tells that you took care of yourself when you're young. So now in your older years, you've come to harvest mm. because you took care of yourself when you were young. And this is the stuff that we're trying to explain. It doesn't start taking care of yourself at 15, 60. You got to do it young because it comes up to get you. And I just want the kids from the crime, from rap, to just do well. Because see, I started out with NWA. And as I'm older now, I never thought I would say this. I, I, it's hard to believe that the music really has affected the mindset of these kids. Yeah. They're done. Like 30 years ago, you couldn't have told me this would ever happen, but it really affected them badly. And I think this is the mindset of the young rappers. They think they have to be tough. They think they have to carry a gun. They got to get their face tatted. They got to start drinking lean. They got to have real braids or fake braids. Like it's just a, 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 a horrible way of living because I want the, I want, they need to really still talk about their ancestors and black history and things of that nature. Because if you can influence people with rap music and crime, you can also influence people with education and still have the same beat and you still can have a good time. Yeah. I mean, they're saying the young, young thug is facing life. And oh, from yeah. what I understand, he's got no plea deals on the table. Also, oh, they know for what? Yeah. He's not, not, no, no. He's not going to get a plea. Well, it's based on a murder. Yeah. It's based that's on, what, I'm on glad you said that because that, that's yeah. why everybody else got off and somebody died. That's unheard of. Well, because the guy they're blaming for the murder. Well, and the guys involved in the actual murder are all still locked up. Okay, they are. Yeah. Okay, thanks for letting yeah. me know that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The guys who are getting out. Gunner really didn't do shit. He was like, okay. from the from the very outset, if you look at my old interviews, yes. like, you know, when we first start covering the case, like, and I brought in George Sheedy, who actually told me that this was about to happen. Okay. You know, a journalist from Atlanta. Yes. Like, Gunna was just around. He was just a rapper. They okay, got pulled good. over. They found some guns and drugs in the car. They weren't his. You know, right. he was not a drug dealer. He's not a gang leader. He just got hemmed up with everyone else. Okay. So good to know. Good that to part know. Didn't, didn't really surprise me. One of the guys that got out apparently um, was like... Uh, you know, allegedly got permission from Young Thug to kill wife and Lucci or to stab him or something like that. So it's like, you know, this, 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 like a bunch of people like, uh, you know, Young Thug's blood brother got out as well. Like er everyone's taking these various plea deals. But the main people involved around that murder, they're all still okay. sitting in prison. OK, yeah, OK. Because it yeah. was a lot of people got arrested. 28 people. 28 people. OK. Okay. So you've seen like, I don't know, maybe four or five people gotten out so far. Okay. Majority of people are still sitting there. Because it seemed like for some reason, when those gentlemen got out, it seemed like everybody got out. But hearing what you're telling me, again, facts. Yeah. Okay. Well, and look, and from Gunna taking his plea deal, Boosie got on Twitter and said, yo, Gunna's a rat. Yeah, I saw, I saw my man He said flat Boosie. out, he said, that's a rat. And for everyone who's saying not, you guys haven't gone through what I went through. No one was facing, none of y'all have been facing real charges, you know, because Boosie beat like a murder charge. Yeah, I remember. You know what I'm saying? He was on death row right. in, in Louisiana. You know what I'm saying? He's like, y'all ain't been through what I went through, so y'all can't talk about how I talk. Right. You know, I mean, I had Life Jennings, uh, Life Jennings here the other day who did 11 years right. over a murder that he was involved in. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, um, it was like a, he, they firebombed a uh, drug dealer's house. It was the wrong house. 25 year old mother of six was inside and died Wow! at 14 years old. He got 11 years mm -hmm. and he didn't tell, even though he wasn't actually even there from what I understand, he didn't tell. And when I brought it up, he was like, you know, you need people like Boosie out there. 
You know, you need the boosters right. of the world to talk about what's telling and what's not telling. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I don't know. You know, I did a poll. Will Gunna get to the same level of success that he was at before cooperating? Mm. Hard to tell. Yeah, hard to tell. Because these are all a, street rappers, you yeah, know? People have a... Um, people forget very easily. They do. They do. Or hit you hit say records pro- fix everything. Yeah, hit records fix everything. That's so true. Ask R. Kelly when he was having his problems back in the day. He dropped a song. Everybody forget. Ask politicians. They do the same. That They know people forget. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, this case is supposed to go to trial sometime in 2023. Um, you know, and I've, I've learned a lot of things off the record about mm-hmm. this shit. It's a lot worse than people are, are, are thinking. The Young Thug thing? Yeah. Okay. It's a lot worse. It's a lot worse. There, there, there's stuff out there I haven't put out publicly. Okay, wow. Just because I know some of the people involved in it and right. so forth. I've had conversations with people. So and more than just murder? Well, it is a murder, but the, the story of it is pretty fucking ugly. Okay. <laughs> like, it's it's pretty it's pretty ugly. Okay. And, and people are going to be pretty shocked when all the information starts coming out. Okay. So, I mean, listen, we'll see what happens. I know that, um, you know, people like Young Thug's music, so you get the whole free Young Thug, uh, you know, movement. But, you know, uh, at the end of the day, if a crime has been committed, a crime has been committed. And, you know, you don't want to free people that are actually guilty of these crimes. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you don't want to have these maniacs out in the streets who are, you know, putting hits on people right. and shooting. No, I totally understand. And so forth. Yeah. And to the people who understand what Vlad is saying, listen, when you grow up, man, you got a nice home, you're yep. living good, and you, you want to be able to sit at your restaurant with your children and your girl mm-hmm. and know you are at peace, know that you are safe. Now, we all tough. See, yeah. what kids don't understand is that we used to carry guns too. We used to hurt people too, but we bury that. We live long enough to get where we are. So we want the best for you as well, but don't put us in a position to go back to really show you how it's done. So if mean me, if, meaning if I got to lock you up for me to be at peace, I have to do that. And that's what the thing about society, they think when you get caught, they supposed to, you're supposed to just get a slap on the wrist. No, you got caught when um, Kamala Harris? Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Yeah. When she came into vice president, I was talking about her. Mm-hmm. And they said, TK, she put a lot of blacks in jail. I said, they got caught. <laughs> right. The fuck you think they supposed to do? They, people think you get caught, you're supposed to get a pass on some things. On some things. Yeah. But once you get caught, yo, you caught. And guys, it's, it's a beautiful life out here if you live long enough to make it happen. It, the, life's amazing. Yeah, and listen, I've interviewed some of the biggest uh, drug dealers in America. Yes. And um, the, uh, the one thing that I've always seen consistently is if you're going to be doing illegal things out here, selling drugs, was it whatever, for every year that you ball out and you have all these cars and these girls, this jewelry, you will do three years in prison mm-hmm. for every year. I've seen that over and over again. You got a five-year run on the streets, you'll do 15 years in prison. Mm. And is it worth it? I don't think so. No. I mean, you broke it down. It's amazing. I'm a lot older than you. And when you broke that down about the 6%, about the key and you get the mark of And so yep. many people hit uh, me about that mm-hmm. because it made sense. I'm like, wow. And people thinking some, some fly shit. But it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. And look, just just do do the math. Okay. You make a hundred thousand a year selling drugs. But then you gotta sit in jail for three years. So in four years, you make twenty five thousand a year. <laughs> ah, right? That's right. You're making less than minimum wage. That's so true. That's what it really is in Bass real numbers. Backwards. You made a hundred thousand over four years. Right. And three of those years you're in a cage. So it's even worse than making right. twenty-five. Yeah. At least the, the, the minimum wage worker gets to go home and right. eat some McDonald's on the job. Exactly. You don't get to do that shit. You don't get to do that. You're eating prison food. And it's horrible. Like you ever ate had a hibachi? Yeah. And how sometimes they sit you with people you would never fucking eat with <laughs> in your life. That's prison, huh? That's prison. Yeah. 
when you sit down next to somebody and you look at them like, man, I would never eat next to this motherfucker. Right. That's what that is. Horrible feeling. A little Romeo and Master P are going at it. I saw that. You know, Romeo accused Master P of spending all his money to pay off his taxes. Claimed that he didn't get a rap snacks uh, check until this year and his dad did him dirty and everything else like that. Master P responded that little Romeo was 33 years old. And you know, he may not be the world's best father, but he got his, you know, his family out the ghetto, put them in, you know, raised them in a mansion. You can't say that Master P did not give Romeo a hell of an opportunity as a child. Right. So is Romeo claiming that his dad should do more for him? He's basically saying that his dad did him dirty. Okay. Okay. Because I wonder what happened. I didn't have time to. Well, it, it started off with a uh, master. You know, there's the guy, uh, the Twitch boss, you know, the DJ for Ellen. Okay. Yeah. They ended up uh, committing suicide. Okay. Yeah. I read that. And then uh, Master P did kind of like a tribute for him. You know, Master P's daughter died recently. Right. Yep. Drug I read that. And then so his son was like, oh, you're going to do all this for this, this stranger, but you know, your own daughter died. And then it kind of started back and forth and sort of escalated. You know, I mean, listen, I, I don't know the logistics of this family. I've interviewed Master P a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Seems like a nice guy, obviously very professional. Mm -hmm. You know, lives in a beautiful house and still has money and still doing things, you know, business wise. I, I, uh, a child in their thirties need to stop blaming their parents for where they are. Right. I, you know, I mean, and, and I think this is this is the uh, every parent's fear of having rich kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. I mean, you you have uh, how many children? You I have know? seven. Seven children. Mm -hmm. Now you're not, you know, puffy wealthy, but you right. you've been doing okay, right? The majority of your yes. life, you know, your kids probably grew up better than you did. Oh, absolutely. Do you ever worry about? because they didn't have the same struggle that you did, that they're not going to end up, you know, in a good place. At the no, end no, of the day. no. I'm the safety net. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. You got to go out there and go get it. But I'm the safety net. Just don't make, just always, my rule is, just don't wait until the situation is too bad. Hmm. T tell me about your situation when it's still a small situation and that would be there. I, that's the way I run. <sighs> With my daughters, yeah. They can have whatever they want. That's just my rule. With the boys, I run a I run a different ball game. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm re, I'm a lot tougher on my boys, but they all get it. They do anything if they need me. As long as nobody's doing no um, uh, what's the word, conniving to get money out of me. Meaning, if you want money, you got to be a man. You can't text for money. You got to be a man to call me for money. Okay. It's a it's a rule that I have. Well, uh, your kids, your your six kids, um, all different mothers or something. Yeah, all different mothers. I don't I don't believe in having children with one woman. I so think they suffer. So you have six baby mothers. Yes. Okay. How do you feel about the Nick Cannon thing? Nick Cannon, I believe, has six baby mothers as well and has twelve kids. I think one of them is on the way. Right. Well, I was saying this on stage. I'm like, who is fucking Nick, knowing that he's sick? Nick is sick. He said that he has um, lupus. Lupus. Well, he's been had that. Yeah. My point is, if you fuck him, have a baby, your kid get, might get lupus too. So that, that and it's, some things you got to weigh on what's important. But what I found with um, Nick, he found that something very serious. You can't be all at the same place at right. the same time. But I do know he has a lot more money than me. So he can really just bring everybody under one home. Well, they're, they're not under one home. All these women live in different places. Exactly. That's right. my point. But he, if I had to do it all over again, I would have all my kids live with me. Yeah, I mean, listen, Boosie said that his his biggest mistake, I think he has nine kids. Mm -hmm. He said that he had wished he had all his kids with one woman. I do too. I salute you, Bootsy. It means a lot, personality-wise. Yeah. Um, you want your kids to have your DNA, meaning your train of thought the way you think, the way you move from um, religious purposes to taking care of your health to your mentality. It means a lot, it makes a big difference. Yeah, I mean, uh, Akon recently did an interview 
and he spoke about the Nick Cannon situation. And he actually is all for what Nick is doing. Now, mm -hmm. Akon has nine kids right. himself, right? I'm not sure how many mothers. He's pretty secretive about mm -hmm. this whole thing. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they're saying that he has multiple wives. He's always kind of. Right. Yeah. He's, he's been dodging man. this question for me for like a decade. Right. But, you know, when they talked about, you know, Nick Cannon having, you know, spreading himself thin with all the kids, he said, uh, you know, he goes, well, you know. Nick going to recitals. He goes, what? So every single time you're at every single recital? No, that's a white man's thing. Mm -hmm. Who gives a fuck about a recital? Right. No, seriously, listen. My job is to raise my kids, to be responsible, to be understanding, to protect their mother, to give a hand with their father, and to assist with family planning and to be responsible adults. Now, guess what? While I'm taking care of my responsibility to make sure the family has a roof over their head and food, I have to have time to do that and show love. Yes, I will do that. But my responsibility is to make sure they grow up responsible and strong. Right. So he's saying that, yeah, he's not every recital. Oh, well. I brought this up to Life Jennings, who has, I think, six kids also. Yeah, everybody fucking. <laughs> and he was like, he goes, well, you could say that, but those kids are going to remember those missed recitals. Yes. See, and what I hear from what you said, every man has their own theory and their journey, right? Yeah. So it's I always tell people, being a parent with your kids, is what, what is your constitution? <laughs> What is your what is your rule together? Was you there? Was they respect you? They respect you? Do they love you? And it's gonna come to the end. Now, when you do a survey on older people, when they get old, the 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 um research has shown that kids is dropping their parents the fuck off at assisted living and never coming to see them. Yeah. This is a fact, ladies and gentlemen. Read, you can Google this. This is real. Yeah, I mean, my dad ended up in assisted living mm -hmm. you know, near the end of his life, but I was seeing him every few days. Right. You know, I, I had to take care of his care. Mm -hmm. He had Parkinson's. Rough. Right. It's, you, you can't be at home when you yeah. have Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. You have to be in assisted living situation. Right. Uh, but yeah, man, I mean, look, you look at Nick Cannon, he looks like he's aged about 20 years. <laughs> so, you he know, really has. you look at his face. Yes. I think a little Duval made little comments about that. Right. It was like, like Nick, it, it can't be easy. It no, can't be easy. Can't. Listen, me and Nick aren't friends anymore. We haven't talked in like three years. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Uh, I don't expect to, you know, get back to our old relationship. Right. It is what it, it happens. Is. I, Whatever. I, That's yeah, life. That's life. That's life. You remember the good times. Hey, it's a revolving hey, door. Maybe at some moving. point we'll run into each other. We'll step Show aside respect. and have right. a conversation. It might go good, it might go bad. Right. Who knows? Who knows? We are all, everyone's successful, everyone's living their lives. Right. Um, but having a bunch of kids so quickly with so many different women, you know, when you now say- Now that's crazy. Like when you have that was kind three of the or four in the same year. Yeah, I mean, and that's, now, that's, that's serious. what Boosie said. Boosie was like, I got a lot of kids too, but I, I spread them out. Yeah, mine spread out from, <laughs> mine's know? from 35 to 14. Yeah. His is- all the same age. All the same age They're and the same twins. year. Right, right, yeah. exactly. I mean, but look, we wish you the well, Nick, um, Nick Cannon, health-wise, mentally, because to the young kids out here who think it's easy having these kids, these we got money. You got some kids out here who don't have no money yeah. that think this is easy and you're nothing in these women and no financial planning, no education, a struggle. Somebody I had a, on my podcast, gentleman said he had a baby and he said that the condom broke. And I said, listen to me. I said, ain't a dick that sharp in the world that could punch a hole through a condom. I've had condoms break. Yeah, but watch what I told him. I said, you put a ink pen in the hole of the condom and then put it on your dick and then think, I, he laughed, he said, yeah, you're right. Now, Vlad, if you, if you bust the condom, I've had condoms break. I motherfucker salute you. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying I'm John Holmes or nothing. My, I'm just saying that I almost got married because I put a condom on. This girl's pussy took the condom off. Well, you know what happened when? Uh, wait, wait, you, wait, wait. What happened? <laughs> I missed that. I had sex with this woman. Yeah, and the condom was on. Yeah, and her pussy took the condom off. I said, "Bitch, I love you." I, yeah, I've had condoms slip off. That's I mean, I've had, awesome. I've had condoms break. I've literally wow. pulled out and there was just the ring, the rubber That's ring awesome, around, around my feet. Awesome, well, you. But you know what I did afterwards? I got a morning after. That's right. That's right. I ain't never had that. I, 
Man, let me tell you something. My pullout game was horrible. Bro. I could I was, tell. Six man, kids. I'm so fucking mad. <laughs> my pullout. Like when women, when women want to have sex with me now because of my age and what I know. I said, you want to have coffee and snuggle? <laughs> I mean, have you ever actually pulled out of your own driveway or? What do you mean? Have you ever pulled out of your own driveway or do you hit things on the way out? You're talking about your pullout game is horrible. Have yeah. you ever actually no, pulled no, out? No, no, that's funny. <laughs> no, 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 I had a cat. That went over my head a little bit. A yeah, my pullout game horrible, Vlad. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I, I bet. What I've learned in life, I saw a woman the other day, body was cold. I'm talking about drop dead gorgeous. And an old man was in the store with me. He looked at her. He said, mm. I said, yeah, I hit him with this. I said, yeah, she fine, but what's her character? Mm. And he said, yeah, son, you are so right. And that's what men and women, when they look at a person, because of what their title is, how much money they have, you have to say, what's their character? And when you say that, if you're smart enough, it can take the lust right out of the picture to really see that person for what they really are. And that's what most people get caught up in when they see a fine woman. It's, they're right. not looking at the character. Or when women look at a rich man. Exactly. You know, when you said, hey, you know, aren't these women worried that their kids are going to get lupus? Right. I don't think that these women are really worried about a whole lot knowing what they're walking into. Exactly. I think they're thinking, hey, this guy's got money. I know that my lifestyle will be a certain type of way if I have this man's baby. Clearly, he's not monogamous. Yes, yes. Clearly, Nick Cannon is not going to be with just you. Right. He's continuing to have sex with everyone raw dog. That wants to have his baby and raw and dog. He's, and he's not pulling out with nobody. Right. So, so nobody there's going to be more babies along the way. You're going to, the money's going to keep getting, you know, Spread smaller, more smaller. and more thin That's unless right. he somehow just keeps getting bigger and bigger as a, as a business person, which I don't know. I don't know his business right. anymore. Like I said, we don't talk. But like these women, you know, are signing up. To me, it just seems like a paycheck. I mean, they may like the guy. They may find him attractive. But when you're having his baby, like, you know, abortion is still legal in California. Right. So, you know, and it's not like any of these women are like CEOs of companies. And so, you know, one's a DJ, one's a former model, social influencer. And like what we're saying, ladies, I know if, if you're young, and me and Vlad are not trying to throw you ladies under the bus. What we're saying is, as you grow older, some of y'all are going to say, damn, I should have did this differently. Because yeah. you're going to meet a nice guy. You're going to meet somebody who really fucking likes you they got their shit together but because you have a baby that might have lupus because it's possible the chances of your kid having lupus is 90 percent if dick has it and oh is it is that oh, yeah is that high? oh shit yeah it's high you can oh, google I, it to I, make sure. I didn't know that. that's what yeah. you said it. i didn't really yeah like, when you yeah. have a disease that's passed down to your child well not every disease not every let me see. Yeah. Let, let me look this up. I like Vlad. I was waiting for him to Google it. That's right. Let's see what happens. It's not 90%. It's high though, right? Well, relatives of people with lupus have a greater chance of developing lupus. Only about 2% of children whose mothers have lupus will develop it. How about the dad? From the father. I wouldn't take that chance though. If somebody said you can get, there's a 2% chance you get HIV with that person, would you still fuck that person? Lupus is passed down through yeah. the family. Um, I don't see a 90% thing. Okay, it may not be a high percentage, but my point that I'm making, I wouldn't want to take that chance, knowingly, if I had a choice. Now, if you fucked, if I fucked you and you didn't know I had it, different story. But if I know you got it, I'm not fucking you. I'm sorry. I met a girl in college. Man, I wanted to fuck her so bad, lad, but she was honest. She said, I have herpes. Oh, yeah. And I looked at her, right? Fuck. Because <laughs> I really wanted to fuck her. And we wanted to go into Tommy T's burger joint up there in Northridge. I'll never forget that. I'm talking about drop dead gorgeous. 
and I had to put my discipline to the side. I mean, put, I had to really fall on my discipline. But to the young ladies staying focused, whether it's 90% or high, you take a chance of putting yourself through that. And if you really love your children the way I love my kids, you don't want them to feel nothing wrong. You don't want to be in the doctor's office all the time if your child does get sick. And the more he has, the higher it comes. Like if you have 10 or 12, one of them out of the 12 is going to get it. Well, one of his kids ended up dying like shortly Yeah, after God bless birth. him. Yeah, that's yeah, so true. Man, yeah. that, that was a tragedy. Yeah, You yes. know what I mean? And listen, you have more kids, there's always a chance this right. happening. That's not his fault right. to any extent. You know what I mean? But to all the women out there, you know, who have his kids, you know, when it's time for them, you know, because it's not like they're all in a relationship with him. Right. It doesn't seem like it. I mean, who knows? Yes. Perhaps behind closed doors. And you just... ladies are beautiful. And like I said, I see where Vlad is going. Yeah. We're not throwing nobody on the bus. We're what, not. We're what not. Me but, and but Vlad you have do. To, you have to look at things realistically. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, that's my baby father. We're not together. I got a kid or two by him. Right. I'm going to go and meet a new man. I want a man that's of a similar stature of a Nick Cannon. You know, but when I, you know, when I start to date this man, oh yeah, I've got one of 12 children of Nick Cannon and, you know, there's going to be all these other baby mothers and baby father and all this is going to be, it's all thrown into the mix. So Absolutely. if we have a new child, he's going to be part of this really different type of family. Mm -hmm. And listen, a lot of men who are, you know, high value men are going to look at this and go, as too much. Exactly. Let me just go find a woman with no kids. Exactly. Or maybe a woman with just one baby father. Right. You know, not. All we're saying know. to you ladies and to new women, I've seen it because I date most of y'all. <laughs> you want to protect your future. Bottom line. Yeah. I mean, uh, Brittany Renner, you know, who I've interviewed uh, before, mm -hmm. she kind of went on this. Uh, you know, this interview recently, and she was just saying how she, at this point in her life, she has, you know, a baby with a basketball player. Right. But she's dated a lot of guys, a lot of celebrities that she didn't really, she alluded to, but she didn't really say by name. Mm -hmm. But she was like, at this point of her life, she feels disgusted that she shared her body with so many men who didn't value her worth. You that know what to that her, is? To her, having sex was the same as going to the bathroom. Right. And she feels used and cheap at this point that she gave her pussy away. Right. And for a woman, sex is more of a, a spiritual, right. physical, emotional bond with that person. She's always gonna have a bond with these people and she feels used. But what I love about what she did, she grew up. Yeah. When you said that, I said, all she did was grow up. Yeah. I tell women all the time, there's a thing I call the crossroads, where you get to a certain age after all your mistakes and it's either spiritual, you come to this crossroads of enlightenment. You either gonna start going to church a lot because of all the dumb shit you did in your twenties, you grow up, you wanna start living a better life and you change. Yeah. And that's what happened to her and I really wish her the best. Man, I've interviewed her. I, I've mm -hmm. talked to her. Oh, I've interviewed her uh, twice. I actually did her first ever interview. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah. And um, look, she's a cool girl. And um, tell her I was young, I'd holler at her. <laughs> she is kind of sexy, though, but I'm yeah, telling you. Yeah, man, look. You know, pretty girl. She now has a baby and she's trying to navigate the rest of her life. You know, it's tough because she got to where she is by showing off her body. Yep. That's how she's attracted these men. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how she's made her income. And it's a double-edged sword. Yes. So you got men that want to get with you for your body, not so much your personality, mm -hmm. not because of your accomplishments, not because of, you know, your intelligence per se, not to say that she's dumb, but, you know, because she's not. So you go through this process and you kind of get what you put out there so if you want a different type of man, you have to put different things out there. Totally agree. I hope you young men and women are listening. Because like I said, every time I come on here, out of all the millions that listen to us, we can just get five or 10. Yeah. Or a little bit more, we did our job. Right. That's right. Well, uh, 
Diddy just had a new baby. Age 53. Uh, now, what's interesting was that Diddy is dating a bunch of different women. Mm -hmm. Now, you didn't know the woman that he had the baby with. Right. But Young Miami from the City Girls was always basically touting mm -hmm. their relationship right. and so forth. So when this came out, that he's having a baby with a whole different woman, uh, you know, academics basically said, damn, Diddy just had a side baby on all the side chicks. And, you know, Young Miami got upset. Right. There was a whole back and forth and so forth where Diddy actually said, he said, listen, uh, Young Miami is not my side chick, never has been, never will be. She's very important, a special to me. I don't play about my shorty wop. I don't discuss things on the internet, and I will not start today. Although he is pretty much disgusting. I respect, <laughs> you know, let, me, let me tell you, let me tell you, uh, Puff from New York, mm. all his women are taken care of. And if you're going to have women, that's how you do it. Everybody is taken care of. So when you take care of a woman, you know, they'll put their um, differences aside if they well taken care of. And that's why you don't really hear no problem. But Puff is at the level he really can take care of you yeah. without even making a commitment. And he's a player, yeah. you know? He's living a bachelor life. He's not married to nobody. Yeah. He's, I don't think he'll ever get married. No, and, he's never been married. And, he, and this yeah. is the way you're supposed to live your life. This is, to me, this is the way you're supposed to do it. Now, having a baby, that's something that he wanted to do. Because he ain't had no baby since then, so this is something that he wanted to do. And he did what he did. And I'm quite sure all the other women he date, if they want to stick around, are going to be like, okay, no problem. As long as you're good, good to me. And Puffy, are you coming by today? <laughs> <laughs> well, right, because in that tweet, he said, uh, you know, Young Miami is very special to me. Right. Didn't say that's his girl. Yep, that's didn't right. Didn't say that's his lady. Exactly. And she's very special to I me. I love the way he words. I, she's I'm one of many. Say, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Listen to me. I have nothing against Puff on that. That's that's the way to do it. Treat all your women good, do what you get. And when you treat them good, can't nobody say, because I think he gifted her a $500,000 Bentley or something, right? I'm sure he did. Yeah, I think I read I, that. I'm sure he did. Uh, you know, they're they're on private flights, they, they whatever. I mean, look, if everyone knows what's going on, it just is totally what it understand. is. Now, don't get me wrong, I've, you know, people always say to me, TK, when are you gonna get married? And, you need to settle down. And to the people who marry, I think that's a great thing. Yeah. I tell people all the time, um, all birds are not to be caged. Mm. Their wings are just too big. Mm. And that's just life sometimes. You gotta look at it that way. Right, you're never getting married. Nah. Nah. You're 62. Two. Two. Any more kids? Nah, nah, nah. Did you get a vasectomy? No, nah, no. Nah. So you could have some more kids. I'm not having sex no more. I'm really snuggling with bitches. You don't have sex no more. No. But my, put it like this. My sex When was the last time you had sex? Wow, Vlad, it's been about a month. A month. <laughs> That's bad for me. So so someone could be one month pregnant right now. Yeah, but no, they're not pregnant. Trust me. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's. That's Vlad, you're talking to TK. Man, listen, you tell you, I, I thought you were going to tell me like two years or something. No, no, nah. no, 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 you don't understand. I used to be a hoe. Man, listen, I, I got you. I've, I, I, I've, I've hold out myself. You know I, 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 mean? I really have slowed down. Like Okay, but you, without a vasectomy. Yeah, you can. You could absolutely, there, there could be a woman one month pregnant right now. Yep, that's so true. But I, I ain't fucked that many people. I only have sex with one. But I agree with what you're saying. One is all it takes. Yeah, that's what, no, no babies. What is well, all here's it takes. my new thing. I, I, and I say this in my stand-up now, too. I, I talk to women who has a vasectomy and who don't have a monthly no more. Them the women that I date. Women who are in menopause. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Fucking small bitches. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> women who ain't trying to have no baby. Okay. Women who got menopause, they ain't bleeding. Only problem I got with them is they hot and cold. Mm. What does that mean? I mean, the menopause, they hot. Uh, hot Take flashes? The they hot flashes. <laughs> I'm not dating oh, them young man. bitches. Give me an old <laughs> bitch that want to go to the park, walk, and drink okay. some tea. Who's the oldest woman you've ever slept with? How? What age? Um... 
good question. Nobody my age for sure. Your whole life, not not right now. Your whole life, the oldest woman, the oldest woman ever you dated, ever slept with. For example, when I asked Boosie the same question, he said at at, at fifteen, he had sex with a fifty five year old. What is the oldest woman that you've ever slept with? What age? Uh, Probably when I was young, I was about 15, 16. It was a crackhead. How old was she? Uh, about 55, 50. Okay. That, that is a big age. That's like three times your age, more, almost four times. Well, when I was 17, the oldest probably was uh, I dated somebody who was 35. That was it. But there's never been nobody in my age group. So 35 is your max. Was my max, yeah. So I date from. Ain't no one on menopause on 35. No, no, I know. <laughs> but I'm saying now, now. I'm, them the women that I look for. I look for women, little arthritis, <laughs> you know, a little high blood pressure. Here we go. Menopause starts between 45 and 55 years old. Yeah, I'm looking for them kind of women. Okay. Little arthritis, you know, a little ache here and there. So you Jared know. Tall. Yeah, that's, that, that's what I'm looking <laughs> for, you know. Women who don't have fake titties. And I tell people in my stand up, I talk about when you date a woman who takes her bra off and her titty hit her knees, those are really heating pads for at night when you they behind you <laughs> and the titties is on your back and they're cuddling you. And you if you got tightness in your back, like everybody can talk about the sleep number mattress. Mm -hmm. There ain't nothing like dead titties. You get some titties that's hanging and get right on your lower back right there on this. Oh, your back just loosen up. I'm going to take your word for it. I, I'm going to totally take your word for it. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, speaking of that, uh, Amber Rose's uh, baby father, A.E., is actually dating Cher. I saw that. He is 36 years old. She is 76. Yeah, that should be interesting. 40 year age yeah. difference. You know, uh, Ed Lover did an interview with us. Okay, with love Prez. Ed. Shout out Ed. Shout out Ed Lover. I mean, he said that, that that man should be ashamed of himself. He said at 40 years old, that one was 40 and he was being born. 76 years old and hooked up with, um, what you call it, Amber Rose's ex. And he's 36 years old. What what's your thoughts on that? Is is nah, it just let her be happy? That, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy right there. You're 36, and she's 76. 76. No, nah. I mean that, that, this is beyond. This is beyond. So when you cougar. was born, she was 40 years old. When, when, when you were born, when you, when you touched down on planet Earth, she She's was... already 40. <laughs> you don't see the boy cloud chains that you share? Come on now. You used, to be, you used to be married to Sonny Bono. Ask the boy who Sonny Bono was. <laughs> Ask him what's the name of the song that y'all used to sing or Sonny and Cher when it was on TV. Just, just, just sing it to him. Just go, we both are young and we don't know. We won't find out until we grow. If he yeah, can't say, I don't know, that? baby, if that's true. But you got me and baby, I got you. If he don't know that, get his ass up out of there, man. <laughs> get his ass up out of there, man. Oh my God! Get the him fact out of that there. you even remember that is hilarious. Come on, man! I used to watch Sunny and Cher, man. Come on, uh, come on, man! Get him out of there, bro! Come on, he ought to oh be shaving God. himself, man. Come on. My thing about that, I think when you're young, you got to date. I, I, I've dated a cripple woman before. Cripple doesn't help. Like. She, she, her legs was dead and she was walking like on a cane. She couldn't do nothing. And I would fuck her. <laughs> How's that? I'm being honest. How's and that? I used to do a joke about that. I said, but you can't lift them up because their legs go everywhere. <laughs> but it's a true story though. 
No, I actually, I, I believe you. Yeah, she, she was, I, I she, was you. she was, a, she was a, she was a, I've had sex with women that after they had a car accident. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it gets better. Okay. No, nah, this girl was in the hospital. She had a car. I didn't know she had a car accident. When she finally was able to reach me, she still was in the hospital. Okay. When I went to the hospital, I shut the door and I wound up fucking her. Okay. I'll be, be doing my thing, but Okay. <laughs> well, 76 is, is a little, yeah. Especially if she feels old. Like there's certain people, if you don't take care of yourself and you get on top of them, they, they feel old. Like you feel death. <laughs> you say he's fucking dead. Yeah, you feel he's dead fucking the Grim Reaper. Yeah, they, you, you, because they, you can't move them a certain way, right? And uh, in, you can feel the stiffness, or you, or you can't put their legs all the way back. And that's not even older women. There's some women young who don't take care of themselves that is just stiff. Oh, they. Oh man, I've been there. It's been horrible. Let me tell you a story. A friend of mine told me this, right? And and this is how the decisions you make affect you later in life. A friend of mine was dating this girl. Whenever they got in the car, she would not put on her seatbelt. He would tell her to put on a seatbelt and she would say, stop being a bitch and let's go. So she never wore a seatbelt. Mm -hmm. They broke up. She went on with her life, not wearing a seatbelt got into a hideous car accident. They met up again, started messing around a little bit, and she can't even have sex in most positions because she is permanently fucked up yep. from not wearing a seatbelt. Mm -hmm. These little decisions in your life early on, and she was, I don't know, maybe in her 30s or whatever. You know, you don't meet a lot of old people who never wear their seatbelts. That's so true. You never meet a lot of old people who are morbidly obese mm -hmm. you know what i mean That's like right. these decisions you make early on will affect you negatively for the rest of your absolutely. life absolutely so wear your seat belts take care of yourself because you will pay that price you will pay you know what i mean like right. you know i interviewed michael jai white and at 55 he looks great right you know what i'm saying i'm saying that in the straightest way right. possible and everyone will agree with me mm -hmm. this is this is honestly in terms of in shape, right. the best in shape 55 year old that I know. Right. And his wife, also a fitness fanatic, very much in shape, you know, they're similar ages, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I said, what is your secret? And I was expecting, you know, a bunch of, you know, supplements or workout routines or whatever. He goes, look, your body is the only thing you truly own. That's right. And, and that's how I approach it. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be at some point in your life where, you know, I'm going to have a cane and 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 I would give anything to run and and so sprint and, and 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 do things. So since I'm able to do it now, I appreciate it. Right. So I work out. I eat a certain type of way. I avoid certain things. You know what I mean? And 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 people don't want to think like that. You yourself at your age, what do you do that you think is key to keeping you? at this at this state well first of all this is priority wise and what i think is uh is valuable i mean you know if i say okay i'll give you you know five million dollars today but you have to die tomorrow or i'll give you five million dollars but you know you're gonna have horrible health you, you, you can, like you you quickly figure out what's more important right i mean your body your health is the only thing that you really own that somebody can't take away from you. So I kind of look at it like uh, it's it's nothing about kind of just this discipline thing. It's it's I get to do it. I get to train. I have the right, like, you know, this is a right for everybody. Hmm. And people talk about like, oh, I don't have time. Like, okay, let's put these things together here. Because you say you don't have time to, you know, to put into your health. Th th I would argue that Taking care of yourself gives is the only thing that gives you more time. Hmm. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, because you know you have more time on this planet at a better quality of life. Yeah. So you don't have time to work. Well, okay, you're gonna have less time than you know. So to me, that to me it makes a lot of sense. The fact that one day I'm gonna have a cane and I'm gonna wish I could run, 
I'm going to wish I could get out of here and go work out. I would give everything I own to be able to do that one day. But guess what? I could do it right now. Yes. But look, at 55, he's a great grandfather right. of three, I think. Wow. He has a great career. Mm -hmm. He's got money. He's doing movies. He's happy. Yes. He's, his kids are happy. Mm -hmm. But you know, but he lost his son to COVID. Okay, his adult son, yeah, his adult son, you know, but his son was on drugs. Okay. And wasn't taking care of himself. So when he got sick, and, you know, and Michael had COVID. Yeah. I, didn't know I, I remember I was hanging out with him right before he got it. Mm -hmm. he, him and his wife got COVID. Right. They came out of it. His son, who unfortunately did not make good decisions and his body wasn't strong enough to deal with it, passed away. You know, it's, it's, so about, this is life. Remember I told you, it starts yes. young. You gotta, got like, it's like brushing your teeth, taking a shower. Yep. You have to, it has to be part of your lifestyle. Larsa Pippen is dating Michael Jordan's son. She is 48. He is she 31. She's a motherfucker. You think she's boy. fine? Man, when I see her. <laughs> you want that? No, I don't want her. But when I see her, <laughs> I go, damn, that bitch fine. But I don't like her way of thinking. Hmm. Her way of thinking is horrible because she is a mother, right? Mm -hmm. And she moves carelessly. And she's gonna keep fucking with someone that ain't gonna be one day and gonna put her with her bullshit. And she's gonna end up with a bullet in her head. Oh, you she think moves. So? She moves. We're she not moves hoping regularly. for this. By no, the way, we're, we're, not not ho we're not hoping for this. I'm just explaining how how very some women can't play a certain game because she's a very beautiful woman. Right, remember, she's the best of the future. Exactly. She's the a future is making songs about her. She's a very beautiful woman. Some men never had that. You can't play with these men emotions. Some ain't gonna take it. Some guys don't never get a pretty girl. But she is, I mean, you know, no, she's the attractive. son of Michael Jordan has access to pretty women. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, I'm not just talking about him, because she's not gonna be with him that long. Yeah, I don't even think they're even together anymore. Yeah, yeah. She's not gonna be with him that long. And she's gonna keep jumping around. Well, I had Gilbert Arenas here recently. Mm, my man. You know. And he said something interesting. He said that for someone like her, she needs a younger man because that that's the type of person that'll, that'll give her the attention that she craves. Mm -hmm. If she has a man her own age or even older, they're not going to be as impressed with her. Exactly. But a younger man will be like, oh, yo, right. I got this older right. cougar milk. Right, right. She's a single woman. Who's going to... Who's going to be attracted to her at this point in her life? Younger men. You think? Yeah. So you don't think a 50-year-old man would be interested in her? Why? Because she needs that, she needs the attention. She needs someone who's going to look at her like she is the prize trophy. The only person that's going to do that is a young generation. Hmm. Oh, Scotty Pippen's, Scotty Pippen's ex-wife. Right? Come on, oh, Scotty. Like that, that. That's the. Come on, that's the only person going to get. No, fifty-five-year-old man is going to be excited about. Come on. I mean, the fact that Jordan and Pippen are not on good terms right now. You know, what I'm saying after yeah. the last dance. So there's that, and then you're hanging out with the son of the I guy. That the, you're you're ex-husband's teammate. And here's the other thing that nobody talks about. What kind of man is P Mr. Pippen? I don't See, know. let me explain to you what I mean. If you, uh, 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 the mother of my children, I was married to you, not that yeah. we dated. I'm married to you. I was married. married. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I'm going to explain to you the world. And I'm going to say, you are a representation of my children. Yeah. And you have to move a certain way. Now, I'm not saying who you should fuck, but you can't fuck everybody that's in the same house, meaning everybody that's in the basketball world. Yeah, because yeah. she, was, she was dating this other basketball player. Before. Exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. Now I can see you fucked the electrician, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a motherfucker that ran a tech company, Yeah. different things, but you're fucking everybody and from rap to basketball. Yeah. You're not even going outside that fence. That's what I have a problem with. And from what I read, she actually in the in the divorce settlement, she got a piece of his pension. 
<laughs> that look wow. was everything. <laughs> that look you gave me was everything. Man, how yeah. the fuck? Wow, man. Hey, man, it's cold out in these it's streets. It's cold out here, it's man. It's cold. It's cold. Man, let me tell you something. If I got married and a woman divorced me and she was in front of the courthouse doing a press conference, that can 10 minutes do that. What the fuck is going on? It's it was shooting scary. in the area. <laughs> <laughs> it's shooting in the area. Man, fuck all that. Fuck all that. Well, Kanye, he's paying 200000 a month yeah, in child he support. He used to have it. He's going to be able to get that down. Well, it's four kids. Yeah. 50000 a month. And I would think because she's a billionaire, yeah. she would want the money. But because to me, no disrespect, I always say how I don't like his character. The way he moved, she had to get something from him because he didn't take her through all that bullshit. Mm. I truly feel Kim would have said, I don't want your money. Yeah. Just be a good father to your children. Sure, yeah, because she also got the house that he bought across yeah, the street. Yeah, it ain't the money with her. Yeah, she, she don't want him around. Yeah, it ain't the money. If she would have had, if he would have moved through life like a man, I, we talk about this all the time, yeah. a man, not on the internet talking about, I don't know where the fuck my daughter's birthday party. Guess what? I got so much motherfucking money. You can have your own birthday. I'm going to have my own party. Oh, yeah. When, when I look at, if I were to look at the quintessential nightmare baby mother and baby father, from my point of view, the quintessential nightmare baby father is Kanye. Absolutely. The quintessential nightmare baby mother is Black China. Yeah. It's interesting how both of them are all the same family, the right. same extended so family, how, how it's all sort of right, came together. Right. But yeah, I mean, you got this guy who's out threatening your boyfriend constantly, and now he's saying he loves Hitler. Right. <laughs> you know? And I, and I know that affected his the, the judge. I know that affected the attorneys. Yeah. I, I know it affected every decision. Man, listen, I remember he went on the streets. Yeah, my Jewish lawyer said that uh, if I, you know, if I make comments about the Jews, it could affect my child, you know, custody of my children, you know, my ability to see my children. This Jewish guy told me, I'm like, ain't this common fucking sense? You know what I mean? Like, if, if your baby mother was a Nazi or was a fucking ardent racist, you know, was out doing crazy shit, of course it would affect the custody so of everyone's yeah. children. Like it has nothing to do with you yeah, or Jewish so people. True. You know, it's like, yo, your honor, because my husband is out here praising Hitler and say DEFCON 3 on Jews, I have to go and buy extra security at my kid's school. Exactly. The 405 freeway that connects all the freeways here in Los Angeles has people putting signs saying Kanye was right. Mm -hmm. You know, people are attacking, attacking Jewish people on the street That's so true. on Kanye's behalf. Like, you're causing so much chaos that the kids ain't got nothing to do with. That's so true. You know? And, 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 and they life could be in danger. Their life could be in danger. Absolutely. And to me, the stupidest part about all this, right? Kanye saying how much he loves Hitler, how much he loves Nazis. I don't get it, man. If you were just do a quick Google search, look into a little bit of history, and Kanye doesn't read. Mm -hmm. He doesn't read books. So, so of course, he doesn't know this part. Right you would see that Hitler actually um, was killing black people hand over fist and basically took all the mixed children in Germany and forcibly sterilized them so they wouldn't muddle the German race. His words. You know who has mixed children? Kanye West. This man who was so against abortion and so forth, his own kids would be forcibly sterilized. Right. Forcibly sterilized if you were to meet his buddy Hitler right. at some point. Yeah, lack of knowledge. And the thing I've always said for years, and I always tell people that, and people get this one rule my OGs taught me. As you go through life, you never discuss religion and politics. Yeah. It's the number one rule amongst OGs around the old heads of the world. 
and they'll tell you that because uh, you see all the confusion has happened in the last 10 years yeah. when people think it's just easy to mention religion. It's e and easy to, uh, yeah. it goes so many different ways. It does. It and does. you're never gonna get the answer that you want because there's always someone out there with a different belief, a different way of thinking. So it's best never to discuss it to all the people on podcasts, TV shows, wherever. When that question comes up, you're supposed to say, I don't discuss politics and religion. Can we talk about something else? I mean, since our last interview is when you saw the whole Kanye breakdown, mm -hmm. you know, the meltdown, and, you know, he lost every deal, including his Adidas deal. Yeah. You know, he went on Drink Champ saying that I could say all the anti-Semitic things I, I want, and Adidas still can't drop me. Day later, they dropped him. Yeah, they damn sure did. You know, he went from being a billionaire to who knows. Right. He's saying he owes 50 million taxes. His bank accounts are being, you know, seized and so forth. This has been the most epic meltdown and self-sabotage I've ever seen in life. Absolutely. In life. Now, I'm going to tell you what I thought. Hmm. I thought he was going to die. Normally, I, I think, when people act this way, yeah. death is around the corner. Listen, I've interviewed Kanye back in like 2005, mm -hmm. I think. And it was it was the same Kanye. It was just people didn't realize who he was yet. Okay. But his 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 character was exactly the same. Very very arrogant. Okay. But it was more like I'm the best, and I'm not putting you down, but I'm the best, and y'all should realize it. Right. You know. <sighs> I mean. So money just enhanced. Just enhanced what, what he, was. he was. But I mean, at the end of the day, Kanye loves himself too much to kill himself. Okay. Good to know. I don't think he'll kill himself. Okay, good. To I know. think he'd be the last person to take his own life. Okay, good. Now, I'm people happy. accidentally take their own life through drugs and right. so forth. He's not on drugs, I don't think. Well, something's wrong. I mean, he's bipolar, from what I understand, and he's right. not on the medication that he's supposed to be on. But is he on drugs? Drugs? I, I don't know. Okay. It's hard to say. I mean, I don't. I'm not around him. Right. I'm not around. Well, him. Well, he acts bizarre. Yeah. And when I start hearing people when I travel, or oh, he's doing that to get out of his deal. No. I said, is you out your fucking mind? He got 6.6 .6 fucking billion. I said, there's two ways you can do this, ladies and gentlemen. I said, you can go to the people and just say, I want to be out of my contract or renegotiate your deal if you don't like your deal. That's on that level, you can renegotiate your deal. I said, two, I said, and I want everybody to listen to me. See, in this world, are you really concerned about the black man, the history of the black man? You don't tell the left hand what the right hand is doing. You build schools. You teach your community, one student at a time, just to know their education, to have another language. I said, do you think people really want to sit with Kanye West? I said, but because he was a billionaire, they sat with him. And that's how he was able to get in the door because people worship who has the most money. I said this when we was in New York, yeah. they don't worry about the character of the person. They worry about, oh, he has a lot of money and people need to start looking at people more than the money. I'll, I'll, I'll stand on that to the day I die. Character and Kyrie as well, who did nothing wrong he just voiced his opinion, but it cost him $500,000. Oh, it cost him more than that. He lost his uh, Nike shoe deal, which was $11 million a year. Man, that's a lot of money. That was a $100 million deal. God over, damn. Over the course right. of like, like and nine years. And I saw yeah. that they interviewed the guy who, I guess from Amazon, who in that division, the tent, are they going to take it down? He said, absolutely not. Oh, no, the CEOs of Amazon said they're not taking down uh, yeah, they the not, movie. Yeah, they take down the movie. Which, which I mean, at the end of the day, it makes sense. Because, which makes sense. Which makes sense. But it's amazing how he's he different. You know, right. listen, they have Hitler's autobiography. Right. Mein Kampf on there. Like, there, there's different things. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, if you want to watch the movie and if you but want what to I'm saying is absorb he, it, that's, that's your right. Yeah, but here's what happened. He gave that movie free publicity. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure the owner of that movie made millions. Man. Free publicity. And that's why, again, you have to be careful what you say. Yeah. You have to control your emotion because once it comes out your mouth. Yeah, it's over. It's over. I mean, when, when Kanye made the, the comments about George Floyd died from fentanyl. Oh, man. 
Rosa Parks was a plant. Right. Uh, you know, white lives matter. As a black person, how would that affect you? Hearing a black man say a bunch of white supremacist type shit, how did that affect you? I, I actually said, what's wrong with Kanye? What's wrong with Kanye? Who raised you? Who raised you for real? <laughs> yeah. And what I did was I actually took it to my stage and started doing my stand up. And I said, so they talking about black, black Lives Matter is a scam. Yeah. I said, but Jerry Lewis been doing the same shit for years with muscular <laughs> dystrophy. And before he died, all the motherfucking kids still was sick. Jerry's kids, yeah. Jerry's kids. I said, <laughs> I he ain't saved kid. not one of them motherfuckers lives before he died. <laughs> I said, if you go by and visit them people now, they still fucked up. I said, <laughs> I'm only playing with y'all. Don't y'all take me sit on. I don't want this causing no harm on me. But I'm just making fun of it. Yeah. But um, Kanye, I, I, I'm going to tell you a story. Since I've been on the show seven, eight years now, something like that, yeah. There's a thing called growth. And what I mean by growth is, I want this to be our last time we talk about Kanye West. Okay. And, I'm, and then I'm going to explain to you why, because there's growth. Yeah. Kanye is going to still be the same person to the day he dies. He's a bad example for young kids because they think they can go around here being emotional and mm. crying, acting the fucking fool. Where me, you, different men around this country who represent being a man and teaching young young men to be men and to better themselves, get their mindset together from the women that they choose to the putting work in to have a good job to understand you most people can't won't be millionaires by the time they're 25 you really got to put the work in yeah. and you actually did it on your computer most mm -hmm. millionaires don't happen to their in their 60s and they need to understand you got to put the work in and i think about when i was growing up you see the the older guy in the cadillac with the nice slacks on and the, and the blazer open door for his wife right but he had this confidence that he put the work in. He looked good. You, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. He got that look and you're like, wow, look at him. See, the, the kids don't see that. That, 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 that man, Mr. Johnson is called. Mr. Johnson pulling up in the caddy. He wasn't a millionaire, but he was successful because he started out young. He saved his money. Yeah. He probably didn't have good credit when he was young. But he got great credit now. His wife looked good. She getting her hair done. And they got the backyard, the fence. Kids look good. Everybody looks good. Yeah. And that's what you kids, I want y'all to get that. You're going down the wrong path. You don't, you think you're supposed to have everything now. Like Nipsey said, it's a marathon. It's yeah. for real. It ain't a sprint. Uh, it's long. Yeah. It's years. It's decades. Yeah, years. man. Listen, I, I didn't, I mean, when you mentioned that, I was like, Man, I didn't really start getting money until I was about 40. I'm and that's for, a good I'm, 40, I'm 49 right now. Yeah. And at 40, that's when the money started to right. really. Yeah, and it's I mean, coming in. Yeah. I mean, I started right. Vlad TV in my mid 30s, but it took right. some years. Took and, years. And before then, I was a DJ. I wasn't making no real money back right, then. Right. It took me a decade of being in the industry to even figure out what my real career is going to be mm -hmm. of trying this, trying that, mixtapes, DVDs, right. you know, DJing, touring, like, you and don't, you, you don't know. That guys, he had a lot of different things. A lot of different shit, And he man. owns this. Yeah. Vlad don't work for nobody. Right. I want, I like making sure they know that, Vlad. Oh, yeah. That Vlad don't work for nobody. You can't say Vlad cancel Vlad. You can't say Vlad X, Y, and Z. He owns. Yeah, this. and I have a catalog that will continue to earn money after I'm dead. Ladies and gentlemen, do you hear that? Okay. Do you hear what he it's said? It's an asset. It's an asset. And there's an asset. You could be an asset business or a service business. Absolutely. You could make a lot of money doing services, but that money will end when the service is completed. Absolutely. In asset business, you continue to make money long after you've done the service. And when he sleep. And when I sleep. <laughs> I've, I've made money during the course of this interview. Exactly. Right. Isn't that awesome? Yep. Um, 
BG might be getting released uh, from prison soon. God bless That's what they're saying. Do you know him personally? Yeah, no, yeah. Because yeah. you were part of the whole right, cash right, money right. tour and Listen, everything that, else like that. That was one of the greatest journeys mm. of my life in with cash money. You know, it all started because of this man named um, Ron Bird. We call him Bird. And I was at a concert. I was on tour with the um, with Jay Z on the Hard Knock Life tour, mm. and um, Baby was there. And Baby said, "What up, Walter?" He said, "Hey, didn't you do that movie New Jersey Drive?" He said, "I'm about to do this movie called um, Baller Blocker." He said, "I got the number one artist in the country right now." And so called back that ass up, um, juvenile. And he said, "I want to do the movie." And I met them. And what he loved about me, we just talked a couple weeks ago, baby. Shout out to baby and okay. Cash Money. Um, cause we're supposed to be doing the movie um Ball of Blocking too. Okay, so that's official. Yeah, that's and official. You're in it. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, because right, you told me, but you said don't say nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. The and ball I haven't said shit. Yeah, boy, I got the script. There we go. Everything. Ball, ball of Blocking block. Two is official. TK Kirkland yeah, is in it. Ball of Blocking Two is official. Wait. Did you get killed in the first one or I got shot, but you got shot. Yeah, but you know how the movies are. Okay. Is. NBA Young Boy. Yeah, so, NBA Young Boys attached to uh, it. There's a lot of names attached to it, and we're real excited about okay. it. Okay, any other names you can mention? Nope, 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 okay. nope. Okay, NBA yeah. Young Boy and TK Kirkland. Yeah, TK Kirkland. And of course, you know. And Baby. Baby. Yeah. And um, is Wayne in it? Yeah, Lil Wayne's supposed to be in it. Okay. This is the, the cast. Mm. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm glad they really thought of me. Like, when you get a call from Baby on your phone, like that's awesome, but him and um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've talked to Baby a few times in the past uh, few months. Yeah, him and Slim, they always show me my love. Me and my son talked about it all the time. We was walk, me and my son was walking down the street in Miami, and they was in Rolls Royces coming down um, Washington, and they saw me, parked the car, got out, and actually had a conversation with me on the street. That's the respect he's always showing me, and I think what he always loved that when we was to tour together. I never rode the bus. I always was so organized that when the show was over and they would leave to go drive by 10, 11 hours, I was catching a flight mm. at seven that morning to get there and I would beat them. I paid for my own hotel. Pay for yeah. That's the way I was living. But yeah, I was yeah, fuck those seven, 10 hour f- yeah, I'm not drives. Doing I, I did that, that with NWA. Too, yeah. I would never do that shit again. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, and, and if you ever experience, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great feeling in, in the buses, especially if you star and you got the big ass bed in the back. Like that's a phenomenal, but, but I wasn't a star with NWA. Right. I was the motherfucker in the top bunk yeah. um, with, Three three down and three on the other side, right. and everybody had to use the same damn bathroom. Yeah, and when just when people was eating good, like I was eating good, so the fucking toilet getting stopped up, the the whole there's <laughs> a shit mobile going down the fucking highway because the whole bus stinking. Oh, it's just fucking horrible. But you learn from it, and um, so from NWA to Nelly to Jay Z, Cash Money millionaires to. Frankie Bailey made, they, matter of fact, they came, his team came to see me in Baltimore mm-hmm. and I was on stage and afterwards, I'm like, oh shit. You know, like it's it's really a blessing to have done the, all these shows this long and to see what I've done in different stages of my life. Cause of um, the Nellies, the Jay-Z's, the yeah. Cats Running Millionaire. But then what's popping now is the Vlad TV. Mm. See, people come, when they hear my name on the radio, they go, Vlad. And people, when I, cause I shake hands after the show and take pictures for free, I don't charge. Yeah. Nice. And um, they go, yo, I love you, I'm Vlad. Well, at one of your shows, someone actually yelled out, Vlad TV is the police. Yeah, and I tell people, and I explain to the young man, I said, I'm gonna, and I'm, I'm gonna, <clears throat> I've said this every now and then on this show, and I'm gonna tell you about being a man. Regardless of what anybody else tells you about that man, if, whatever that man does to anybody else, as long as that man treats you good, you have to respect that man. Now to be a friend, even if you know what your friend does, that's your friend. You could give that person game, you can give them knowledge, but you accept your friend for what they is now. If your friend's a murderer or a rapist, I would say avoid that fucking friend, but that's your friend. But there's a certain level you gotta have a breaking point. Vlad is, 
a great friend because what we did together is I didn't do nothing for him. He didn't really do nothing for me. We both had something talent that we brought at the same time. We found our own lane. Bootsy has his own lane with you. I have my own lane with you. And what's so great, and I really didn't know is when people, when I travel, they say, Vlad, love you and fucking Bootsy. And I'm like, yeah, me and Bootsy is. So me and Bootsy's at Ruth Chris and Lana. Kicking oh, it. in the same restaurant. Yeah, okay. we sent you a picture. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, we right. sent you the picture. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Right. so me and Bootsy, and that was my first time meeting Bootsy. Yep. In like all the years. Cool guy, right? Yeah. Nice gentleman. And we, yeah. we embraced each other like family. Like we embraced each other like family. And what I really want to do in Bootsy, and I want to one day see your concert. Because I heard he gives a phenomenal fucking show. Of course. Please invite me. Um, you got my number, Bootsy. Let me know, because we both work so much. Please let me know. I would love to not, I don't want to be on stage. I don't want to be on the side. I want to be in the cut with the people mm. watching him, because I saw him on video at a show. Oh, man. Bootsy is a professional. Like, people don't understand that. Like, when I sit down with Bootsy, it ain't like, all right, how long is it going to take? Right. Uh, I got a flight to catch. Nah, we sitting down. We we have our business worked out right. ahead of time. He understands that as long as that interview is going to last, as long as I want to keep talking to him, he will sit there. Yep, I noticed that. In the middle of interviews, I've had him reach out and, and change flights. Right. Oh, this is going a little longer? Okay, hey, cha change my flight to three hours later. This right. interview still going. Right. He does not sit there and half-ass it. He gets animated. He, he doesn't dodge questions. Right. He he puts on a show in that interview. I love him. And 10, 20, 30 million people tune in and watch every right. time. Yep. And we all win and we've been continuous, continuously winning. We've known, we've known each other for damn near 20 years now. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I met yeah. him when he first got signed to Atlanta, mm -hmm. to Atlantic. You know what I mean? There's videos of us when he looks like a damn baby. Wow. You know, I look young as shit right, too, right? Right, right, Webby's there like the whole nine. So, yeah, so it's Boosie, great. Boosie takes his shit seriously. Yeah. He's not fucking around. Right. He's got a bunch of kids mm -hmm. and he takes care of all of them. Right. And he takes care of his mother. Yep. Yeah. So I saw and everyone's got a nice house, you know, right. got a nice house. Everyone got nice cars, clothes. No one, no one goes without for nothing. Yeah, you, he, you, you yeah. the truth, Vlad. Yeah. Boosty, my brother, my TV brother. There we go. I'm glad we connected because like I said, if Vlad is picking you and me, we are doing something special because no other comic's been on here more than me. Yeah, yeah, no, no you, you, Boosty, uh, Tony Yayo has yeah. stepped up yeah, this Tony's year. Yeah, Tony Yeo, he's yeah, really he moved up a little bit. Oh yeah, no, yeah. he's he's one of the mainstays. Yeah. Uh, you know, Young Jock and Sean Prez. Yeah, yep, that, my family. Real. I know them. You know, guys. by the way, by the way, Young Jock, in our most recent interview that you did, you said if Tory Lanez was found guilty, you're gonna shave your head. I want that shit done on Vlad TV cameras. Okay, yep, yep, <laughs> you yep. said you said it on Vlad TV, so I feel it has to be done on Vlad TV. Right. Now, if you want to do it privately. That's your own choice. And shout out Young Jack. That's my man. You know, yeah. but same with you. When I go to their show in Atlanta, yeah. man, off the air, yeah. they talk to me like I'm the OG. Yeah. I got everybody here. And I think that's phenomenal yeah. that I have that effect on. And shout out to everybody. When we were talking about uh, Cash Money, Irv Gotti said that Cash Money is the greatest hip hop label ever. No doubt about it. No. I mean, it's hard to argue. I mean, because they're still doing it. They're still doing it. Where everybody else has fell off. Yeah. they still on a run. Master P had a hell of a run, but he's right. not doing music anymore. Yeah. So you can't say, oh, well, no limits. I mean, you know, you could debate it at the time, but you fast forward 2022. They've been doing it over 20 years. Yeah. I mean, there's also Def Jam. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's Def true. Jam's that's no, true. Yeah. That's true. Yep. You know, and the, you know, Slam, absolutely. We forget about Def Jam. We forget about Def Jam. Def Jam is right there. Def Jam is that motherfucker. Yeah, Def Jam is that motherfucker. And they're still doing big and shit. And they're still doing big you shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, quality Control is doing well, but they're relatively new. Okay, I never right heard there. of Quality Control. Well, that's like Migos, oh, okay. Yachty, okay. Uh, Little Baby's affiliated with them. Right. Um, you know? Coach, Coach K. Coach K. Yeah, I know Coach K's from he got P. that deal. Yeah, I know Coach. Child right. Coach K. Yeah. So, you know, 
Yeah, I mean, Cash Money is is is, is a fucking force, you know. And Blueface is still a very viable yeah. artist on Cash Money. J- uh, Jacquees. Yeah, and they still... have a lot of artists I never heard of, but they they all on the radio. Yeah, yeah, man. Listen, Baby is a is a motherfucker. Like man. he, uh, you know, you know, it's actually funny when I just said that. I, I went on Twitter. I'm like. To this day, I'm still surprised how common the word motherfucker is, mm-hmm. even in my own vocabulary. Right. Because when you say it, you're talking about fucking someone's mother. Like, you know. Right, right, right. If I say, yo, that's my motherfucking man. Right. That's my man who fucks my mother. Like, I, I, right, it's, right, it's a right. crazy term that's so commonplace right now. Yes. But when you look at the actual word, right. it's crazy how common it is. It is common. But what, what you have for you is what we call uh, intelligence. Yeah. And see, when you're intelligent, you see, you look at things both ways. You know, in, in, in a relationship, that will get you some pussy because we call that sapiosexual. Because you, <laughs> you, you, you drop in knowledge at the same time. Yep. And a female go, wow. Oh, Vlad, that was, I like the way you did that, mm. Vlad. Bam. <laughs> well, uh, you know, Speaking about cash money, Birdman said he created the blueprint for Southern rappers to hustle. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like I said, I've been there. I um, When they first started, I seen the, the cars they was driving. I saw the hustle. Um, baby, and I think I told you, he truly respected the way I was hustling. Even when I did my first special called Who Raised You? If you see the intro of that, um, they all drove down to see my special. And you see us all walking in backstage. Um, it was really a great, great, great night. Well, yeah, I mean, I remember you told me the story that always uh, I always think about. You say how Baby was the first person you met that just did not respect money. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said that he had 10 uh, Range Rovers yes. with all the tires that were they flat. Was flat. Because he just never drove them. Never drove them. Like we right. pull up to the house and all Range Rovers Hummers on flat tires, like it was in a abandoned car lot. Well, you know, I actually looked it up. Uh last year these pictures came out and he had a mansion in New Orleans that he just abandoned after Katrina. Man. If you take a look. Look at this. Wow. This Eleven thousand square foot mansion. That's in New insane. Orleans. That after Katrina hit, he said, eh, I'm good. That's just, when you got money. Just dumped it. That's insane. May, may still own it. Yeah, <laughs> you know that's what I'm saying? Insane. Just that's fuck, insane. Just fuck this mansion, I'm going to Miami. Yeah, that's insane. Like when he paid me, when I did ball the blocking, he, I told you, I'm, I'm about to tell you a story how he paid me. How'd he pay you? He came into the dressing room and said, T- with bag full of money, said, TK, how much I owe you? I said, nigga, the whole motherfucking bag. I remember the story. <laughs> Shout out to baby. Keep winning, baby. Yep. You know, Irv Gotti made the the comment about Cash Money being the greatest rap label mm-hmm. ever. And of course, you know, Murder, Inc. was a fucking force of oh, nature. Oh, damn, they sure was. During his time. When uh, Irv did uh, Drink Champs, he mentioned how he was sleeping with Ashanti. Right. During during the, the recording process. Right. He was married at the time yes. and so forth. And Ashanti kind of took offense exactly, to some of the comments exactly. and so forth. What did you think about that? I felt he should have kept his mouth shut. Yeah, a real player, you don't talk. I, I, and God, you, your brother, I love y'all, but you know, we always keep it real amongst each other. Yeah, Because there's a lot of women who are married to this day I've slept with. I would never, no matter how old I get or how sick I would get, right. would I, I tell them. But I could always say this, if you know your girl used to date me and you got married and that little thing she do to you, I taught her that. Woo, <laughs> 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 ah, TK. Well, uh, Ashanti, she went on The Breakfast Club and she talked about a situation with a producer that she was working with. And uh, I guess, you know, he charged like 50,000 for a track. And he told her like, I'll tell you what, I'll waive the fee if you take a shower with me. Wow, did she take a shower? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to wash her ass, boy. <laughs> you know, because I want to use Dove on her. <laughs> like you can get some special type of soap for Shanti, because you know she got butter skin. You see, the average motherfucker would went in there with some fucking Irish Spring. You know, <laughs> like you when you wash a Shanti, 
and then you're supposed to have a hand up on the wall and really take your time, you know, lift the foot up from the back. See, some people, average motherfucker take the foot from the front, but ain't like a woman being on the wall and you bend her leg back and you wash your feet and make sure you get between the toes. Oh. <laughs> well, look, I mean, Sexual harassment and so forth is a real Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm just being right. funny. We're, we're, you're being a comedian. Yes. Right. Yes. And of course, you got to play around with yes, taboo, yes, taboo yes, topics yes, and so forth. Yeah. And look, I mean, you know, fucking for tracks has been a thing in the music industry both ways. Right. Women will fuck producers. Right. For tracks, mm -hmm. hoping they'll become a star one day. Right. That's the R. Kelly situation mm -hmm. in a nutshell. Right. Men will try to get women to sleep with them. They change for tracks. Right. And it's not the closed mouths don't get fed. So oh, she said no. He asked, he said no, you gotta deal with it. My thing is the young kids where you got the teachers now fucking the students. Mm -hmm. And I just wish they was around when I was growing up. <laughs> so you could have fucked them? I would have fucked them. You would have fucked the teachers? I, let me tell you what I every, every high school boy wants to fuck at least exactly. one of his teachers. And these motherfuckers is telling. That's what I don't get. You your teacher's dropping you off at school, saving your mother gas money. Sometimes she feeds you and brings you home. Sometimes she buys you clothes and you go tell on her. And I know women think this is wrong, but I do this in my stand-up as well. I talk about, ain't a man on this planet who's strong. If, his, if your baby mama calls and say, your fucking son is fucking the fucking teachers at the school. Get over here. He gonna come over there. Where that motherfucker at? And when he go in the room and shut the door, he say, "Man, you really fuck? No. Oh shit. You the truth. Let me see a video. Got me. <laughs> you got me. Open the door. <laughs> Babe, these, this is fucked up. Shut the nigga that I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Do this shit, yo. You mom, you know what? You mom me. That's how I was when I was young. <laughs> I mean, listen, man. I mean, there's obviously different rules. No one wants their daughter fucking a male teacher. Absolutely. You know Double standards, but that's Double life. Standards. That, that, that's life. It's man. life. And, and, and the, the thing that I found frustrating in, in today's society is that when it comes to women, and you know, people are going to get on me, and that's, not, that's mm -hmm. fine. This is here, right here. Women want equality. Mm. But most women also want special treatment. Right. A woman says, I want to get paid the same amount as a man for doing the same job. Every woman will say that. How many women will say, but when I go out to dinner, I want to pay 50% of that check. That's so true. When I live with a man, I want to pay 50% of the bills. That's so true. And this is coming from a man that always pays for a woman's meal. Right. The last time I split the bills with a woman was in college. Wow. My girlfriend in college, we were both broke college students. I had a part-time job. She had a part-time job. Our, you know, our family was helping out when they could. You know what I'm saying? We shared an apartment through most of my uh, college years. We split the bills and that was okay. At the point that I graduated and got a job, from that point on, every single woman I pay everything. That's awesome. You want to call me a trick or whatever? No, 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 no problem. But let me ask you a question. I'm a man. I'm a real man, and I will cover a woman's all the base. I respect that. Yes. Now, at the internet meal, you ever notice that they say the food was very delicious? Yeah. Because when you're not paying the bill, you can <laughs> it actually taste better. It right. Tastes better. <laughs> <laughs> right. When you're not paying the bill, you can actually see the motherfucker. When you're eating, you can actually see them preparing the food. Right. But I mean, no, that's the way you no, move. No, I mean, listen, and, and that's the thing. And that's, I think that's what's causing some of the, the issues. It's like you want equal treatment, but you also want to be treated like a princess. Right. Or a queen. Yes. And you kind of can't have it both ways. You know, you want to get into an argument with a man, but if things don't go your way, you pull a Karen. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, th th this man threatened me. Right, uh, right. No, we were just arguing. Right. No one got threatened. We were just what arguing. What you're saying and, and to the audience and men and women, as you go through life, everybody's gonna have that experience. Yeah. Choose wisely. Choose wisely. Choose wisely because you will run into it and you gotta make good decisions. Uh, Gabriel Union and, mm. and Boosie got into it recently. You saw that, right? So during an interview, when they asked about Boosie's comments about Zaya Wade, you know, uh, her 
stepdaughter, stepson, mm-hmm. however you want to, you know, approach it. She kind of implied that Boosie was gay. Right. Said he got a lot of dick on his mind and so forth. To nobody's surprise, <laughs> Boosie, Boosie quickly answered. Right. He said, the whole world know I love women and the world know your husband loves dick. Mm-hmm. I hope you don't think blacks look at y'all like a power couple. They don't. I'd refuse to talk about y'all in interviews. And here you go. Go bang with that dildo and wait on a script, you little white girl. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. I mean, you know, I don't think Gabby was too surprised to, to get this type of right, right, response. Right. I don't, listen, I, I, I've i never heard of any gay dildo things when it comes to Dwayne mm-hmm. Wade. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, DM me and I get a lot of, I have a lot of contacts out there. I think it was a fire with fire situation. Right, right, oh, you right. want to call me gay, I'll call right, right, man right. gay. The you know? thing about them, um, I never talk about anybody, what they do in their privacy of their home, as far as their sexual preference or how they raise their kid. The only problem that I had with uh, Gabrielle Union and her husband is that they put their business on the street. Yeah. And I think that when you're an influencer, there's some things that should be done quietly. That's your child. Do what the fuck you want to do with your kid. Yeah. But when you start seeing how you can influence the rest of the world, because believe me, somebody made a decision based on what they did. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, me and Van Lathan had a conversation about that, about mm-hmm. how, you know, Dwayne Wade obviously loves his son and his son wants to present himself as a female and you want to not make your child feel bad right you don't want to send him to gay conversion therapy or whatever else you know some of the you know you don't want to beat him or or you know Mm -hmm. make him feel bad but when you go on a promo tour on a media run talking about your transgender child well then now the whole world will have an opinion about this. Exactly. Because you are a major celebrity that's putting it out there. Right. You know what I'm saying? I've always kept my family just just private. Shut I, I, I go up. I go into interviews and I say, no family questions. Exactly. And if one slips out, I'll be like, you're going to cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's you know, the way it should be done. And that, that's the thing. You know what I'm saying? That's the way it should be done. What's my family situation? It's not too hard to find, but right. I don't put pictures out there and so forth because mm-hmm. I just want to keep that private. Right. You know, no, nobody, you know, listen, people have a kid, they put a picture of their kid, uh, what's gonna happen? That's an ugly ass kid. Yeah. Uh, I, I wanna I wanna rape that kid. Right. I, I wanna fuck that, you know, yeah. I'm gonna oh, fuck that kid, kid up. Oh, but she's beautiful. I'm gonna, right? yeah, or yeah. yeah, or you know, I remember like, you know, I think when 50 and, and, and Ross was going at it, like, I think like, Someone like from, you know, 50 said that they put like uh, his son's face on like a monkey body or, wow. or some some fucked up shit like right, that. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. He's back before he had his, his other son. But it's like, well, but this is what happens. That's what happens. There's no repercussions to it. Right. Whoever did it has an emoji of a kitten on it. Right. <laughs> you know, you'll never know who it is. Yep. And this just comes with it. So if you put that out there and people speak negatively, negatively of it, you know, and, and really just shout out to all the all the gay people out there, I never realized until interviewing Jason Lee from okay. Hollywood Unlocked, who was openly gay, mm-hmm. you know, seeing all the comments, like all these homophobic slurs, I'm like, oh shit, this is what you go through. Okay, people call me the feds and people call you a bunch of gay slurs. Right, like, right, okay, right. we all got our own mm-hmm. cross to bear and so forth. And you know, and I'm, I'm sure it's tough to read some of those comments, yes. but hey, he wants to be open with his sexuality. Mm-hmm. He wants to talk about it. And he understands that whatever comes with it is whatever right. comes with it. I keep my mouth shut. I only know about the stuff y'all tell me because the comments be so funny. When you say they have me associated with everything in the world. There is a fake TK in every video comment that we ever post, period. Wow. Every single video, there's Man. a fake TK Kirkland. Someone suggested an interview with the real TK Kirkland, the fake TK Kirkland. <laughs> 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 hilarious I, and i run with it i think it's great yeah. there's nothing wrong with it and um i'm really proud of what you've done with me vlad well i'm proud Salute. of what you've done with me yes i you think know, this is this is a two-way street yeah here. yeah yeah this is awesome 
Bill Cosby is sued by five more women. I saw that shit. Uh, accused of drugging and raping him. Mm-hmm. One accuser is from an incident in 1969. To the ladies, and I say this in my stand as well. If a man ever violates you, I tell my daughters this too, you got an hour to go report it. Mm. An hour, not 30 years, not 50 years. One hour. You can't come back years later and say X, Y, and Z. And then let's talk about the DA prosecutors. Y'all got to start checking in to make sure these people tell the truth. I mean, to be accused of something you did 53 years ago with no physical evidence, no pictures, no videos, no DNA, no cell phones. Exactly. I mean, they did not, they had black and white TVs back then. Man, this is 1953, 1969, 53 years ago. Man. Bro, and, and, and like, Look, I've had so many women over the years that would hit me and like, hey, remember we went out on that date in 2005? No, I do not remember. Exactly. I'm looking at your picture. I have no idea who you are. Yeah, I'm with you. You know what I mean? I, I have, I've easily dated over, it's gotta be at least a thousand women, right. you know, through the course and of my life. And people, and, I, and I'm not saying I'm on your level or above your level, but we travel and people, yeah. They still have that memory. Yeah, we don't. But we've been everywhere. It's hard. We don't. We don't. And like these women be like, remember you were in my car? And you, were... I, I don't. I don't. I, I'm not being funny. I'm not being disrespectful. Yes. I honestly do not remember this day. And clearly you do. And I'm not saying you're lying. Right. But if you were to tell me, if they came out like, oh, yeah, and he sexually assaulted me. Like, I don't know who this fucking person is. Right. Like, you know, luckily yeah. I don't have these type of, right. I'm, not, I'm not a sexual and assaulted. And he, what he said, ladies and ladies, it's not we like we don't don't know you. So much time. Time has passed. Has passed. And we're all over the world. We're, we're and all that's over. In our mind. We're and all over. We, unless yeah. we're talking to you all the time. Yeah. For 20 something years. You're just yeah. a memory. And and one of us is a public figure and one of us is not. Exactly. So you don't remember that 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 person. So to to bring up a 53-year-old situation is insane. Yes. It's, it's just fucking insane. Um, R. Kelly kind of released an album called I Admit It. <laughs> and and I'm mad that down. I didn't download it. I thought it was going to be out a couple of days. Nah, it too was late. jamming. Oh, you, oh, you, you listened? I saw it. I heard a little bit of it. Matter of fact, I heard a little bit because Bootsy yeah, was yeah, listening yeah, to he, it in yeah, the car. Was, yeah, and jamming. I was like, oh, shit. That <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> sound fire. Yeah. And next thing I knew, it was done. But they said he had nothing to do with it, but all the no. shit was, I'm confused. Well, it got leaked out. You know I mean? Listen, uh, the amount of music that R. Kelly has is insane. Yes. Like, you know, I just interviewed Raz B from B2K, and I'm like, y'all's best songs were written by R. Kelly. Right. You know, Girlfriend, right. Bump, Bump, Bump. These are all R. Kelly songs that they just sang. Man. Michael Jackson's last major hit, you are not alone. It's an R. Kelly song. I did not know that. R. Kelly wrote that. R. Kelly is a multi generational talent. Yeah, he he can write. I, I would actually put him number two to Michael Jackson in terms of like all time greatest R and B singers. Yeah. You know, talents just yeah. overall talents. Like I used to always say, I wanted to manage him and Prince. Mm. And the way I did R. Kelly, he would have came out with a two-piece suit with the <laughs> shirt just halfway down with a little ascot. Mm. And during the show, he would take the jacket off while he was sweating to the point how Tank is n- nothing on. Yeah. And I would have women come up on the stage to wipe him down with panties, like as a towel. Yeah. And Prince, if I managed Prince, I would have Prince do an all-woman's tour, mm. and the whole tour is nothing but love songs. Because people don't know Prince gave, if you listen to his album, his love songs is off the fucking chain. Yeah, I mean, Prince was off the chain. Man, you hear his love songs? Whoo! And Rick James. Oh, yeah. Fire Desire. Man. Put Rick on just to nothing but love songs like yep. that? 
Fire and design, man. God bless him. God bless them all. The guy who tackled Dave Chappelle uh, at his show got sentenced to 270 days in jail. Yeah, because he they said because it wasn't a weapon, right? Yeah, he had a weapon on him. But that, something was fake about it. It was like a fake, it was like a knife, something. Right. You know, and. You yeah, know, he only probably did three days. <laughs> oh, you think? 270 days, they kick you right out. Oh, yeah? Yeah. They're not going to make you do that. Nah, hell no. Jail's overcrowded. I mean, the Will Smith, uh, Chris Rock thing happened, mm -hmm. which which led to this. Yes. Because the guy even tweeted about how, oh, you know, Dave, you're next. Right. You know, and he actually did it. Right. Did that set up any sort of a tone at comedy shows, extra security, people being more bold? I think it happens like, to some people. Not you. <laughs> you might get hit with a two-piece. Yeah. <laughs> I'm running up on TK. Yeah, running. Mm -mm. The only way you can beat me if you jump me. That's the mm. only way. It got to okay. be two or three people, or you sneak up behind me. Mm. Head up. I'm not saying I'm going to win, but you're going to be in for yeah. the fight of your motherfucking life. And I'm in my 60s. Mm. I guarantee you be in the fight of your, of your life. I had John Sally on here recently. <laughs> and uh, I brought up the story that he told me about how he was there. Right with you when you stole Charlie Murphy's watch. Right. And I said, I said, well, you know, TK has a different version of the same story. Would you mind if I got him on the phone right now? I love that. So I handed the phone. Yeah. The clip will definitely be out by now. I don't right. think it's out at this very moment, but actually the two of you debated that story yes. on camera. Yes. And you brought up points that he did not remember right. and he said that he may have made a mistake right. and so forth when me and you started hanging out me Faison was coming over to the mansion this is in the late 80s right this situation had already happened already right this was done already this before you was in my life and, and i you got to tell people i did change your life for the better but anyway so in 19 <laughs> you know I, you never changed my life for better you're a big brother i believe you you're the younger brother because I'm older than you. I didn't know you were so old. Your family treated me well. Everybody. Man, we had a great time. But no, I didn't know you then at that time. Right. So I thought it was in 89. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to get Ronnie Rosenbaum. I thought in 89 when we were hanging, then that's when it happened. No, I didn't, Then I stand corrected. But I thought it was in 89 that they were talking about. Yeah, this happened in 82, 83, when Eddie Murphy was doing Beverly Hills Cop 1. We was all on the set. So I didn't know you then. Uh, you know, after that on-air conversation, and thank you so much for having because you, you didn't have to do that. Right, you, right. You, you, you didn't yeah, have you to skip it. Yeah. yeah. It was like, hey, you want to talk on camera? Yeah. Sure, okay, let's do it. From your point of view, after you guys had that, that conversation on, on our cameras, do you feel like... Both of you guys are on the same page now? Yeah, he finally found out the truth. One, I guess I think he thought he was older than me. So he didn't know I was famous before he became a basketball star because I'm four or five years older than John. Yeah. But that's not what's fly about this conversation. What's fly about this conversation, let me praise you. See, when someone says something and you put the other person on the spot and say, yo, here's the phone, Tell you one of the only motherfuckers in the world ever did this, and he'll tell you, Warren Sapp. Mm, okay. Tell you about Warren Sapp. All right, I didn't know you guys know each other. Me and Warren go back to when he played in Miami. Yeah. And he used to come see me perform at this club called Studio 183, and he'll tell the world, ain't nobody more popular than T to the motherfucking K coming up through the 90s. Fast forward, we had the Super Bowl in Miami. Forgot this gentleman's name. He led me to believe he was an NFL player. We talking on the phone, Vlad. The guy's telling me he's going to practice. TK, we win the Super Bowl, the playoff. We go to the Super Bowl. I'm going to get you tickets to the show. I mean, to the game. I get there that same day. His, nobody's answering his phone. Warren is coming to my show. I got Warren Sapp, believe it or not, 
going on stage to do jokes at my show because he had one of them moments that he wanted to do stand up. Okay. We're in the dressing room like this. I said, Warren, there's a guy who said he was going to give me tickets to the game. And I think, you know, he said, what is his name, TK? Forgot the brother's name because when something negative happens, I block it out. I told Warren the guy's name. Warren called the motherfucker. Say, yo, fam, listen, um, you promised my boy, he right here, TK Kirkland. He said, you promised some tickets to the game and I want to know how you're going to handle this. Gave me the phone, just like how you, yeah. that's exactly the same thing. I saw it. When I got on the phone, Ron gave me that phone. Do you know it's the wrong motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> A motherfucker had cash fish, whatever that, what's that word? Catfish. Cat, catfish me? Yeah. A football player, wow. a fake motherfucker, yeah. acting like he was a football player. And all this time had me believing he was a player. But Warren didn't know that. Uh. Warren was standing on what I told him. Yeah. And Warren called the guy that this guy was impersonating and handled the situation. And I found out that day it was two different motherfuckers. Mm. Did you get some tickets? <laughs> Listen to me. Oh, I went wow. down there. I bought a, um, I rented, I had an Airbnb in Coconut Grove. You know how to cut the fly Coconut Grove is. Yeah. Badass house. Had the Porsche. I was so fucking disappointed, man. I never went out, stayed in the room, watched the game. I said, yeah, I was pissed that I got catfish like that. Mm. What I'm saying to the world, it can happen to you, yo. So always dot your I's, cross your T's, ask a lot of questions, because you can get gotten. Well, I want to end it with this. Uh, since our last interview, Takeoff from the Migos was killed in Houston. You know, the, uh, <clears throat> the details are still a bit fuzzy, but there are videos that have circulated. It started out with a dice game, mm -hmm. tempers flared, you know, people were talking shit. Quavo said, let me get up out of here before I hurt somebody. A fight broke out, which ended in gunshots, which ended with takeoff yes. dead on the ground. This DJ from Houston named DJ Pat has been arrested and charged with the murder. He tried to leave the country with a bunch of cash. Didn't work. He's now sitting in jail. Mm -hmm. And it's just so sad, you know, cause I've been to Houston, but there is a danger in dice games. Mm -hmm. I know someone's died from a dice game. Mm -hmm. A lot of people I talk to have known people that have died right. or gotten shot in the dice game. That's why a lot of times you're so close to the money. Mm -hmm. You're squatted down. When you look at that situation and how pointless it is, you got this young man of 28 years old, on top of the world, who's now dead. His parents are now fighting over his money because wow. there's no will. Mm -hmm. I mean, who makes a will at 28? Most right, people don't. right. You know, now you got this DJ who's probably gonna spend the rest of his life in prison. You know, then, you know, there's the whole thing with Jay Prince's camp, because, you know, Jay Prince's son was there. Mm -hmm. and, you know what I mean? Atlanta, Houston's probably some, some hurt feelings between then. When you look at this situation, and look, listen, you and I have lived through so many rappers dying that yes, we've known. We I've have. interviewed a dozen rappers that have died violently. Yes. You, you've been around Tupac. You've right. been around Biggie. Mm -hmm. You've been around a lot of people. Right. When you look at this, what do you think? Know who you are. And what I mean by that to the young men, if you're a fucking millionaire, they got a thing called casinos. Yeah. Go to the motherfucker casino. Yeah. And do it right. With security. With security. And cameras. We can't exactly. You yeah. don't be a you the problem that most rappers have, they call us they want to keep it real. And they want to stay close to the street. Yeah. And they say, Oh, you keep it real because you still hang up with your people. Yeah. Listen to me, people. The goal in life is to grow. Some people you gotta leave. You got, it's just, you, if you're successful and you stay in the hood, somebody's gonna kill you. Bottom, 
fucking line. Because you have fans, but there's somebody who may not even be jealous of your money, could be jealous of your personality, the way you smile, could be jealous of you just the way somebody else like you. Yeah. A great friend, Dr. Dre, mm. said something years ago. He said, um, basically, make sure I get it right. You can't touch what you can't see. And my point is, stay the fuck out the way. It's, you can still help out your community. You can still do certain things, but you got to stay out the way. Yeah, I mean, I remember when the Suge Knight situation happened and, you know, he was, ended up with him being in prison for 28 years. Yes. I remember I interviewed Michelle A. Mm -hmm. And Suge Knight's story was, well, I was meeting Dre and Compton to talk about the business behind Straight Outta Compton movie, whatever. Michelle A said, there is no way in God Dre would have met Suge Knight and Compton. No way. That she's like, that part is made up. And right. she got a baby with Suge and right. Dre. Yeah, so, no. you know, I mean, right. she she understands both mm -hmm. both men very intimately. Right. She said, There's no way in hell that Dre would have accused would have you know, confirmed a meeting with Suge Knight in Compton Absolutely. of all places. Right. So you say, that's just a lie. Right. You don't see Dre hanging out nowhere. Nowhere. You see Dre hanging out playing dice with a bunch of dudes he don't know in, in that's Houston. That's what I'm saying about the kid. Puffy. Yes. None of that shit, None man. Of that. None of that shit. And you know something at a casino? They say, your money is the safest it will ever be in a casino. Right. You could be at a craps table you could leave a pile of, you could leave $100,000 there and say, I'm going to go take a shit. I'm going to be back in a half an hour. And that, you come nobody, back? Yep. Here you go, Mr. Lubavnik. That's right. We, we kept it warm for you. That's right. <laughs> go gamble some more of this money for us. Lose the rest. To That's the, the thing. To the young kids that always say about my conversation, as they call it gems, we drop so many gems. All they got to do is just rewind this motherfucker on yeah. all our interviews, and we give you something to better your life. Yeah, I, I I don't, listen, I just don't hang out. Like I'm 49. You can't hang I out. I used to be out every night. Yes. And trying to establish Vlad TV right. and networking and so forth. Every listening party, every event, every Grammy party, every BT weekend, every all-star, you know, flying to New Orleans, flying to New York. I was there in the mix and a lot of problems arose from me being in the mix. Right. A lot, a lot. You know what I mean? You don't see me out that often no more. You know, I went to your show. Yeah. I was with a lady mm -hmm. and my arm security. Yep. That's <laughs> right? how you have to move. And you know who bothered me that night? Nobody. That's right. Everybody, you know? please. I hope. It's, it's going to be impossible that the next time we do this interview, I hope nobody, no other rapper passes away. But the way this is going, it's going to be inevitable. But we wish everybody um, happy holidays, a great 2023. Yeah. And think. That's all you got to do is think. Think. Yeah. And I guarantee you, you, you your chances will grow higher in this game called life and trying to survive. That's what it is. TK Kirkland, always a pleasure. Glad. Until happy next New Year time. You, happy man. New Year. Happy holidays. Happy Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Yes, happy sir. Kwanzaa. All of the above. All of the above, All of the man. Above. And Enjoy make sure you come to my shows when you hear it on my Instagram. Yep. TK underscore Kirkland. Thank you Ace. guys so much.